This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want. Just dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, you got me, Ian. Derek J. And Mark. And, of course, we'll talk to you about anything at all today in uh, Manhattan, though. I definitely want to cover what happened with the Silk Road trial, which uh, picked up again the trial of Ross Ulbricht, to be more accurate. He has admitted... Uh, in opening statements that he was the creator of the Silk Road. That he was the initial programmer uh, behind the project. And, uh, you know, we've been following the case over the last couple of weeks. It started two weeks ago and entering into w- uh, week number three now. It's going to be a shortened week, though, because of the weather in the Northeast, which is also something we can talk about. They are ba- There are travel bans going up all across New England Except New Hampshire. It'll be an interesting little comparison. Between, you don't want to put a travel uh, ban on. I don't think Vermont or Maine has them either, do they? You know what? I haven't looked at Vermont and Maine. Yeah. Uh, so northern New England yeah. doesn't have the sort of folks you want to put a travel ban on because it's just, it's, how do you ban them? What are you going to do? Send the cops out there and take them to jail? <laughs> it's just, well, yeah, I, mean, I guess you would. Uh, as much of a problem as it is to, uh, you know, be on the road is a problem for the police as it is for anybody else. So that's all in the news, of course, and uh, people in the Northeast are hunkering down, so to speak, for what is expected to be a a good dumping of snow. But that's going to interfere with the Ross Ulbricht trial, so they're not having court uh, tomorrow, definitely. They're not having court. Today it was a half day, and then uh, Wednesday is a maybe, so maybe it'll happen Wednesday, maybe it won't. We will continue to keep you in the loop. We'll let you know what happened today, but first we go to your calls and thoughts We've got Chernobyl calling from New York via Skype. Our Skype username, by the way, is lrn.fm. Hello, Chernobyl. Do we have Chernobyl? I hear it. It sounds like there's like an open microphone there, but not hearing him. So we're just going to put him back on hold, and maybe we'll clear that problem up here in a little bit. Our toll-free number again is 855-450-FREE. Let's jump right in to Ross Ulbricht's trial. Uh, Derek J., do you want to kind of give as quick of a recap as possible as to, uh, you know, the last couple of weeks? I presume you've been following it as closely as as we have here uh, on a daily basis with sure. the Ro- Ulbricht trial. So uh, just to catch everyone up briefly, the Silk Road was a website where people could buy mostly drugs, uh, but other services as well. And the creator of that website, Ross Ulbricht, is on trial for several charges relating to that website. He first started out admitting to being the creator of the website and that was a big surprise to a lot of people because they thought that they would go yeah they thought that he would go not guilty route the whole way uh but he actually admitted to creating the website then said something that also i mean it's been a lot of twists and turns he surprised everyone by saying yeah but then i gave it up due to stress uh it was too much pressure and uh, then pointed a finger at Mark Carpellis, a well-known figure in the Bitcoin community who committed one of the biggest heists p- possibly in history by stealing about eighty million dollars of or eighty million Bitcoin, something crazy amount mm-hmm. of money. And then the judge said that, well, you can't really point fingers at this guy, even though the government investigators did that very thing right. when the prosecution was uh, examining the witness. But during cross-examination, apparently that's just not allowed. So the judge has been keeping the jury in the dark throughout this entire situation. Uh, they've threatened to sequester the jury and make them fear for their lives if there were protests that continued outside the courthouse. Which you were doing. Yes. You and some of the other activists from Philadelphia, as well as here in Keene and Manchester. Right. Uh, You guys were out there on day number one, and it was that first day when the judge threatened the jury. So you guys took off at the request of of the family. Ross's mother uh, had a conversation and said she would appreciate it if, you know, you didn't do the protesting. And it's been a fascinating trial yeah. so far. Now, precisely, and most recently, the the biggest bombshell has been that one of Ross's friends who helped him set up the website threw him under the bus when he was uh, on the witness stand. And the defense attorney was making the case in front of the jury that, hey, you were involved in this website. You chose to be in the witness stand rather than at the defense table. Well, wait a minute. Let's give some credit to this guy because 
he didn't throw Ross under the bus as much as he himself was thrown under the bus, uh, the bus by Ross because the police wouldn't have known about this friend ostensibly if they had not been able to get their hands on what is alleged to be a journal written by Ross Ulbricht. Oh, well, so, that's not throwing anyone under the bus by keeping a journal. He didn't do it on purpose, but he did it on accident in that he put his friend's identity in jeopardy by having logs of chats kept on his computer, which ultimately was seized and searched by the FBI. How do you the think FBI. the popo found this guy? Yeah, but that's not a crime to have a journal. It's not a crime, but to blame his friend for okay. rolling on him hey, after Ross all the evidence is in the journal. Wait a Snitches second. Get stitches. Bull crap. So uh, all the evidence is in the journal, and then what you're asking this dude is to not repeat what's in the journal that Ross Albeck wrote down and allowed the cops Allegedly. to find because he is a silly bastard for living in the United States and getting caught with his computer wide open, and it's this guy's fault for stitching. Poo poo. No, I think the government is clearly the villain here. I no mean, doubt. The, the people who are are just playing the game. It's just unfortunate. But the defense attorney did make a good point that he the the man who is testifying against Ross ultimately chose to be in the witness or stand rather than the defense table, and it it just was making the point that yeah. he was coerced. He yes, was coerced into into sure doing he's this. Coerced. And he was the jury, definitely coerced. Oh, the judge freaked out. You can't say that. You, know, you can't point <laughs> out that people are being coerced in this situation. So well, that's it, precisely what all that is. You can, I mean, everybody needs. I, I can't imagine anyone in the jury doesn't know that. But yeah, this is you know everybody's coerced. So lots of twists and turns, and I think that catches us up to this point. Yep. Uh, the latest from ArsTechnica.com, where in New York today, prosecutors in the Silk Road drug trafficking trial have shown heaps of evidence from the laptop they seized from Ross Ulbricht, the man they say was the kingpin behind the world's biggest drug trafficking website. What hasn't been known until this morning is exactly what led them to Ulbricht. A Homeland Security agent who testified this or last week had been investigating the site since it became famous in mid-2011. But it wasn't until September of 2013 that he even heard the name Ross Ulbricht. Now, that's interesting because the bust went down on October, in early October of 2013. So according to the feds, Ross Ulbricht was only under investigation for a month. Uh, it wasn't until then. So days later, Ulbricht had been arrested. Today, IRS Special Agent Gary Alford took the stand and explained how he got onto Ulbricht's trail using one of the most basic tools on the internet, a simple Google search. Even though the Silk Road operated only on Tor, the part of the internet sometimes referred to as the Darknet, Alford knew it had to be marketed somewhere. He said on the stand, quote, I figured it had to be on the regular internet so someone could tell you where to go. In June of 2013, he searched for Silk Road and Dot Onion, looking only at web references that predated January 31st, 2011, the very beginning of the market. Tor only websites have an extension of Dot Onion rather than the usual Dot Com or Dot Org extensions, because again, this is the dark web. It's a, an anonymous system. The search led him uh, to a post on BitcoinTalk.org called a heroin store, which is still up. The post quoted a January 29th post, since deleted, from a user named Altoid. What an awesome thread, wrote Altoid. You guys have a ton of great ideas. Has anyone seen Silk Road yet? It's kind of like an anonymous Amazon.com. I don't think they have heroin on there, but they are selling other stuff. They basically use Bitcoin and Tor to broker anonymous transactions, unquote. Those interested, Altoid continued, could visit silkroad420.wordpress.com, where they'd find instructions on how to get to the Silk Road. Alford searched all of Altoid's posts. The same user had written an October 2011 post that he was seeking, quote, the best and brightest IT pro in the Bitcoin community to be the lead developer in a venture-backed Bitcoin startup company. Uh-oh. The recruitment post suggested sending an email to Ross Ulbricht at gmail.com. ruh -roh. Altoid had also... Now, if you'd, if you'd read the indictment of the case, you probably had already heard some of this news, but for a lot of people, this is going to be... This is a shocker that essentially Ross did not do a very good job at covering his tracks in the initial days is essentially what they found out here. Altoid had also made one post on shroomery.org, a forum about mushrooms. Now, remember, the allegations in the case are that Ross was the first dealer on the Silk Road, having allegedly sold mushrooms. This is what his friend... 
from college testified. He's, his friend testified that Ross sold mushrooms, even gave him psychedelic mushrooms. We'll find out what the post on Shroomery was all about here in a moment uh, on uh, the latest on the Ross Ulbricht Silk Road trial as we continue in moments. 855-450 free. You take control of Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hard-working men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This 
is Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free here to bring up anything that's on your mind at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio, you've got me, Ian. Derek J. And Mark. Check out Derek on his website, DerekJ.me. There's all kinds of Derek J there. And coming up, Derek, we've got a special announcement to make about your variety of shows that you do. You have five or so uh, radio and video shows that you produce and uh, there's a big change coming soon so that's we'll right com- we'll come back to that here in a okay. little bit Derek J.me is his website and if you care about online privacy r- what we're talking about right now with Ross Ulbricht's case should be another heads up that privacy matters and that you have to take steps to protect yourself and one of those steps that we recommend here at Free Talk Live is Pro XPN it's a private Uh, A global virtual private network, and that means they encrypt your online data to protect you from your internet service provider, among others, snooping on what you're doing online. Without ProXPN, everything you're doing is available for review to anybody who's, you know, administrating your ISP or maybe the coffee shop you're sitting at. Download their app over at proxpn.com slash FTL. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Plus, Linux users, setup's a little different for you, but you can make it work there, too, pretty easily. proxpn.com slash FTL. When you're ready to upgrade to their premium account, you'll get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. What you do is go to proxpn.com slash FTL and then upgrade to the premium account with code FTL50 to get 50% off the price of their annual account. So already you're getting the discount for buying the annual account and you get 50% off of that price, which brings the price down to around 5 bucks per month. So that's code FTL50. And by the way, that code is good for the, uh, the, the, I guess the discount that the code gets you is good for the lifetime of your account. So when you're ready to renew after another year, you'll get the same great deal. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use code FTL50 and get a great discount on privacy. That's priceless. Plus, there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. We'll continue with the latest on the Silk Road case here in moments. First, I think we actually have Chernobyl in New York this time via Skype. Go ahead. Hey, make sure your microphone's plugged in when you call into radio shows. Good idea. Uh, I think it's important for everyone to remember that the Internet doesn't forget. So if you just keep that in the back of your mind at all times, that might prevent... uh, I don't know, getting sentenced to life in prison for running an online drug empire. Uh, I think it's kind of amazing how people can be so smart and so dumb at the mm. same time. Uh, the, the actual reason I called in is uh, I'm the guy who had been prodding uh, Sean Atwood for like seven months to call into the radio show just because I remember uh, uh, thinking that I, I really like this guy and I really like the guys on Free Talk Live. I think what you do, letting anyone call in and say what they have to say, that's a wonderful thing. And I wanted to hear the two of you speak with each other, and so he could get his message out there, because I agree with uh, what he says. Sean is the gentleman who called on Saturday night. He uh, was the guy who wrote John's Jail Journal, which we actually read a few years ago here on Free Talk Live. Uh, This was as he was in Joe Arpaio's jail for two years. He was held there. Toward the end of his stay, he was able to smuggle out some journal entries uh, through one of the visitors that he had. And and those journal entries were put online, and it was an amazing read. I remember when we had talked about that, and and so he just happened to call in. You convinced him to call the show on a Saturday night, and it was actually a perfect time for him to call because it was actually kind of a slow first hour for our Saturday show, and so there weren't a boatload of phone calls in his way. And we actually ended up having him for like two or three, I think three two segments. Three, yeah, two or three segments. Uh, yeah. So fascinating stuff. People who want to hear that story, what it was like to be in one of the worst jails in the United States, uh, run by one of the worst sheriffs in the United States, then uh, definitely check out our Saturday show. You can go to freetalklive.com and download it there. So thanks for encouraging him to call in. That was yeah. great. The one thing that I was sort of left with, um, and, and maybe you know, this might be one of those competitive things that people do, I don't know, but his experience in both uh, jail and prison was different than my experience. He, uh, the way he'd talk about things made it seem like sort of it was bad all the time. It was for me. It was like watching Oz, and uh, this mm. the show, this U.S. show about uh, sort of prison, and it's all sort of hyped up. Now I watched, I think, the first episode of Oz, and everything that happened in it happened to me while I was in prison. 
But I was in prison for eight and a half years. And what I didn't feel was depicted in that was that there's these, you know, long, boring stretches in between the excitement. You know, like prison would almost be exciting if you were to watch these shows, whereas it's, mm. you know, it, it doesn't punctuate really what, what stinks the most about these uh, situations, which is to say, uh, yeah, it, it's just boring. Well, I think the man just wrote what he experienced. And from your own description, uh, just to fill everyone in, like Joe Pyro is like the worst sheriff in America. Yep. He's essentially responsible for murders, even if he doesn't uh, commit them himself. It's amazing. And that that part of the story is, is an amazing uh, claim that the guy's making. The guy's claiming that his or Pyro's guards are killing prisoners in the jail. And that's but about a, one per month. Yeah. It's a pretty what, big deal. What, what originally I called in about was his friend T-Bone was trying to – he's like – uh, he's trying to promote the fundraiser to help feed the guy because the food in there is tainted and horrible. Uh, and T-Bone actually just got found not guilty of the uh, murder charges wow. just recently. And uh, maybe he – one day will be able to walk the streets and I'll ask him – you know, ask Sean to have him call into your show and you could maybe ask T-Bone if Sean's story is full of holes or not. I really – I just, I just get the Oh, I believe the Sean's story. Sh- yeah. I believe it too. I just think it's uh, you, you know, for the purpose of of telling people This is things, the worst jail in the United yeah. States. At least it has the reputation of being the worst jail and you don't get that reputation for no reason. If you're uh, if you've got rats all over the place all the time and inspectors come through, actual rats or like uh, That snitches. was the claim, rats and, rats and cockroaches and things like that. I'm sure he okay. saw those things. Yeah. I'm not claiming he didn't. But I just if you have those things all the time, then some inspectors going to come and shut you down relatively quickly. You think there are inspectors I, coming around there yes, very often? Yes, yes, I absolutely do. Who aren't in the pocket of Joe Arpaio? Come on. Uh, no, I don't. They're going <laughs> to shut down his whole jail over yes, some rats? they will. Yeah, I don't it's, think so. It sounds like just a limitation of literature to be able to talk about the instances where it's very boring in jail. I mean, having been in jail myself, it's like— I think that's like, exactly right. How do you write about those long periods where nothing happens— and in a way that people can relate or understand, yeah. do you just put a bunch of periods on a page? I mean, like, there's there's no way to write about that. You want to talk about the action. I tend he, to agree with that, and it's di- like I I agree that it's difficult to portray. Let's that. remember this is the jail where they we didn't talk about this on Saturday night, but uh, this is the jail where it, they have what's called tent city mm-hmm. uh, because the jail's so full. He can't fit all of the inmates inside the jail, so he keeps them outdoors in over a hundred degree weather. Yeah. And yeah. you know that could also create situations that don't normally happen at the average jail. Um, There's plus, also psychological things, like he makes them wear pink underwear uh, and feeding, he, he feeding brags them. about how cheap the meals are. Right. He uh, is very proud of how little he spends to be able to uh, sustain these prisoners. I think he's bragged at you know, 19 or 20 cents or something like that That's per so meal. so sick. Uh, the jail we stayed at, uh, Keen Spiritual Retreat, Derek J., they spend about two dollars per meal, from what yeah. I understand. There, so it's much, much nicer uh, by comparison. Anyway, uh, well, I, 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 think it's, I think it's worth pointing out um, to people that let's not forget that everybody who's most of the people in that jail are presumed innocent. Mm. Uh, now, I think that likely Maricopa County has the same problems that every other county jail does in America. Is, is the judges are putting way too many people in jail. They do not belong. They, they should not be kept in there. You should only be in jail if you are a flight risk or a danger to the community. And I think that that is being used far too liberally. It's very difficult to mount a defense from in jail. And if no that's doubt. what you More expect... More coming up here in moments. Do- Thanks, Chernobyl. This is Free Talk Live. Hey. Did you know by age 50... Half of all men have an enlarged prostate. This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-467-5090. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-467-5090. That's 1-800-467-5090. Call 1-800-467-5090. 
Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something facebook.freetalklive.com uh excuse me is this where i get a license to start a new business i wouldn't be hasty you have to get a license to go out of business too you know oh well look i've invented this little anti-gravity machine see is that why you're walking two inches above the floor (laughs) oh yes it's it's very comfortable saves on shoe leather yeah well you have to fill out these forms and report to the human services department of manpower orientation and register with the fair employment practice commission the wage and hour division of the employment standards administration the state sales and income tax division the internal revenue service and the social security administration of the department of health education and welfare And, of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town of Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business. But Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you'd like right here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Still to come, the latest on the Silk Road case. Ross Ulbricht is... Currently in a courtroom, well, not at this moment, but uh, throughout the next week or two or four weeks, uh, he's going to be sitting in a Manhattan courtroom where a jury of 12 will decide his future to some extent. Uh, He's being charged with several crimes involving computer hacking, conspiracy to commit computer hacking, conspiracy to sell drugs, and conspiracy to money uh, money launder as well, plus a kingpin charge. And we'll let you know what the latest is in that case here in a moment. But first, we continue with your calls and thoughts. Also want to let you know how to get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. Yeah, you can get a pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. There, where all you have to do is sign up for the subscription. You can cancel it at any time. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica beans. And it's... Uh, the best of the best coffee. It's among the best coffee you'll taste in your life. But uh, not only are you going to upgrade your coffee experience by going there and continuing on with your subscription, but you're going to help people in foreign countries because we're giving out microloans through Kiva.org to help people make their lives better. This isn't a handout. This is a hand up. These are loans, and when they pay them back, we're going to give them to other people so that they can uh, get a hand up in life, too. It's coffee.freetalklive.com. So, more on the Silk Road coming up. First, we've got Jonathan. He's in Wisconsin via Skype. Jonathan, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. Hey, yeah. uh, 
Last night, uh, Mark, you said, you correctly stated a feminist idea that um, if women ruled the world, there would be peace or something like that. And uh, I don't know if you guys have ever been to a social event with your girlfriend, and uh, she might have had a few or maybe not, and she gets into a verbal altercation with somebody, and then she turns to you and says, are you going to let him get away with that? Are you just going to sit there, or are you going to, you and him fight, kind of a thing? Um, now, I don't think Darjay can relate to that situation, at least having a girl out for a date, but does it has that ever happened to you with uh, taking a guy out? No, that sounds like a very specific example. Yeah, it's never happened to me either. Oh, something like that happened to me once. Um, the I was at a dance uh, with my uh, fiancé at the time, or something like that, and I... Um, you know the YMCA came on uh, the the you know the over the speakers the song yeah yeah and so I decided to do the YMCA while seated yep. yeah and I had no at a idea. dance you yeah. were seated at a dance doing the YMCA yeah well, so, were you at like a bar or something this was uh, there were tables and yeah. people mm-hmm. were at them it's a party not a big a deal okay. yeah not yeah. a big deal okay so uh, now I'm seated I'm not standing doing yep. the YMCA I probably don't know how to do the YMCA other than sort of the, with the, the arms letters. that's right? really all that's there is. all there, yeah that's okay. all there is you I can do it sitting if there's any okay so I was doing it sitting and so I go up to do the Y and punch this girl in the chin. <gasps> your, I had your girl for fiance? Not, nope, not my fiance. Oops. A friend of hers. Oh, okay. And uh, you know, I had no idea she's she sitting was next back to you there. or back well, behind you. Well, she was sort of leaning over. Yeah, I mean, oh, you know, wow. like I'm going Whack. straight up to my side, <laughs> and I got her good. You know, oh, I mean, I'm not a you're small, strong man. Yeah. I'm a strong man, and she's a little woman, and I caught her right in the chin. Um, you probably had a few to drink, and maybe were a little more enthusiastic. Than I was you. pretty enthusiastic, yeah. and yeah. so you know, sorry, Heather. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, she turned to her boyfriend, who's you know a couple inches shorter than I am, kind of tubby. Um, oh you, no! They might have uh, they might have even been privy to the notion that I was in prison for a period of time, right? I don't know whether that's the case or not. And she's like, "Hit him!" And I'm like. Whoa, dude, dude, please don't hit me. <laughs> please don't. I'm really sorry. Like, I kept apologizing to her, and I asked him nicely not to hit me. Uh, but, yeah, that's sort did of he, what... So he did or did not? No, he, did, he didn't hit good. me. Oh, he, wow. he, he was really put in a, in a terrible situation, right? Like, here here he is in a situation mm-hmm. where he's supposed to hit this guy who is clear, just made a mistake, yeah. right? And is bigger and somewhat more intimidating and all these things. That's a difficult position for that man to have been put in. Mm-hmm. All right, Jonathan. So there you go. One out of three has had a similar experience. Go ahead with your thoughts. Oh, well, I it is anecdotal, and uh, I'm kind of being halfway serious here. But uh, it did happen to me once, too, where I was at a uh, social gathering, and uh, my girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend, was uh, got into it with somebody, and then she turned to me, and I was minding my own business, and she says, okay, go get him. <laughs> go and, get uh, who? Oh, some other guy, guy. She got into a into a, a, a fight with. Uh, oh man! In, with words, so uh, it does happen, and and I think it's possible. I mean, like Mark said last night, we don't really know what that world would be like because it's never happened. But uh, I don't know. I think there could be a possibility that men would still be sent away to fight. I don't know. Just my so what thought. you're suggesting is that the idea that a woman-controlled world would somehow be a peaceful place. You would say right. is ridiculous. So the notion has been proffered in the past, and uh, I got it from reading. I think it was the Queen of the Damned by Anne Rice, uh, which is in the uh, the Vampire series. Yeah, and but there are already women in positions of no, no, power. The, what right. about Hillary this is a, Clinton? No, I'm not the suggestion talking, would be right. all of positions of power. Not all women. positions of power, but yeah, a but, majority of positions of power, like enough that they create the the female culture of power, whatever that is. Oh, like, like Condoleezza Rice is just some lackey for everybody. No, no, I mean, I'm not making that claim. Look, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, Derek. What I'm asking here is, is what would the world look like? And the answer I'm giving is, I don't know, because uh-huh. I've never seen it, all right. and you don't know either. I would suspect that if we had a culture where, for whatever reason, women were in leadership positions more often than men, that it would be different in some way, and I don't yeah. know what that way would be. Um, I would say that the women who are currently operating are good at operating in a male-dominated uh, political culture, and 
you know, maybe they have to act like the boys or whatever, or well, have Mike's, to outperform the boys or whatever it, they have to do. Clearly, uh, males in charge of uh, political positions are likely to fight. I mean, we've certainly seen that, but I think the same thing would be true about females in those same positions. I mean, yeah. I, I've but, seen women fighting all the time. Uh, you know, they seem to hate each other in a lot of cases. Yeah, but they don't fight physically, the men or the women. I, I think it's an unfair collective collectivization to say that it's uh, male or female dominated. It's sociopath dominated. That's what the politicians and the people in charge are it's not that's a, true. it's not a male culture or a female culture it's crazy people culture i'm not claiming that it's not that either i would claim that uh, sociopathy is certainly on uh you know <laughs> there's a there are high incidents that in um in in government but it would be I, I don't know blind to turn an eye that the vast majority of politicians in washington dc are male jonathan did you have anything else you wanted to share on this well, only to say that uh, I do agree that it is a sociopathic uh, dominated culture. And uh, it is also true that there are more women in power, but uh, it's still a sausage fest over there. It's true. And it's I think true. it's true. But at the same time, I think that the uh, women's lobby has Washington, D.C. by the balls and has for quite a while now. But uh, thanks for the call tonight, anyway, Jonathan. I appreciate it. it. Toll free number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. As we continue here, so the latest from the Silk Road trial is that Ross Ulbricht apparently was outed, according to one FBI agent's testimony, by a simple Google search. The agent was looking for posts that were made referencing the Silk Road prior to its officially going online. So prior to that date, I think it was October, or excuse me, January. January 31st, 2011. So he was looking for anything that referenced the Silk Road prior to that and found an account by the name of Altoid on the Bitcoin Talk forums. Now, Bitcoin Talk is a very popular forum. You can go to bitcointalk.org. Uh, it's still up. It's uh, just a hopping online forum. It's nice to see a forum actually be busy these days in this realm yeah. of Facebook. Uh, Bitcoin Talk is a very busy forum. Anyway, Altoid had posted in there promoting the Silk Road. Now, that original post is gone. However, Altoids posts, the rest of them, are still online. And the user had written in an October 2011 post that he was seeking for some best and brightest uh, Bitcoin types and encouraged them to email him at rossulbricht at gmail.com. So the same account that had promoted the Silk Road two days before its official launch on the Bitcoin Talk forum also had Ross Ulbricht's email associated with it inside one of its posts. Now, of course, the feds would likely also be able to get a search warrant to find out. If he hadn't put his own email address in the post, they would probably get a search warrant for the account and found it at that point. But the point is here, he just left it all right out there for anyone with a Google search ability to uh, to find out. We'll continue with the latest on the Silk Road case with Ross Ulbricht in moments. It's Free Talk Live. Inventory isn't about products, kid. It's about money. Product sitting on shelves is money sitting on shelves. I hate overstock. I hate understock. I hate wasting time. I hate wasting money. That's why I love Granger. Granger Keepstock Solutions help us manage our facility's inventory so we have exactly what we need when we need it. No more, no less. It's inventory management my way. Get it? Got it? Good. Visit Granger.com slash Keepstock for more information. Granger, for the ones who get it done. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a Wall 
all between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates, 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. You dial in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, the police are trying to put a stop to an app. And Derek J has that story. We'll give you that here in a little bit. Want to continue with the latest. There's not much more on the Ross Ulbricht case because it was only a half day in court today. And it sounded like uh, that it was a prosecution witness and that maybe there wasn't really any cross-examination that went on. The prosecution's witness, Mr. Alford, who is an FBI agent, uh, Gary Alford, IRS, excuse me, IRS special agent, Gary Alford. Uh, he says he searched for... The posts that were in relation to the Silk Road prior to the Silk Road's actual beginning uh, on January 31st, 2011, and found one from January 29th, which has since been deleted from a user named Altoid, where he promotes the Silk Road and gives the users of the Bitcoin Talk Forum a way to, f to get on the Silk Road. So he had created a website on WordPress that had a set of instructions as to, okay, here's how you get on the Silk Road. You got to get Tor, and then you got to go to this .onion address and... And I remember from back in the beginning days of the Silk Road, there were websites that would kind of give you step-by-step -step instructions. And apparently Ross Ulbricht was allegedly behind at least one of those. It makes, some, it makes sense that the guy that was setting up the Silk Road would give people instructions on how to get there. And so then the— A lot of people—I'd would I'd be willing to bet that a lot of people's first experience with Tor, like mine, was to go to the Silk Road. Mm. I wanted to go and take a look. And what is, what is this thing of which they speak? Yeah. From what I could tell, there was nothing illegal about doing it. I still used ProXPN.com no. to get there um, and take a look. I was as careful as I you could possibly be. You can browse the Silk Road completely legally, from yeah. what I understand. I, I understand. I'm not I an just attorney, however. don't care to uh, <laughs> to be on the anyone's sites um, any more than I am. And uh, so I went and I looked, and that was the first time I had been on tour. And I imagine there's a lot of people that was their first time on tour. So. 
The agent searched for all of the user's posts. Altoid was his name and found one where Ulbricht gives his email address, or the poster, whoever Altoid was, presumably Ulbricht, gives out his email address looking to find someone who can be a lead developer in a venture-backed Bitcoin startup company. Presumably he was talking about the Silk Road. Um, Altoid had also made one post on shroomery.org, a forum about mushrooms. His post on drugs-forum.com was rejected as spam. Like the others, it was written from the perspective of a user simply checking out the Silk Road. Uh, so, so essentially he took kind of the same post of, hey, I hear there's mushrooms over here on this here Silk Road, yeah. and posted that on different forums. Altoid, uh, let's see, had a search, or excuse me, Altoid, not Alford, that's the agent's last name, Alford had a search warrant to go through the Ross Ulbricht at gmail.com email account. In it, he found all kinds of data, which the government has just started to show the jury that line up with the data found on Ulbricht's computer. Wait, so is that one of those things where the government can get a warrant to search through something digital, like a, an email address, and they can go through all the accounts there, and they just say, hey, Google, give me access to this person's email address and all their info? Yeah, they got a search warrant for his gmail address. But now Google has sort of changed that, right? They've encrypted and or at least oh, I don't allegedly know if I believe that. Yeah, I don't, okay. know. I don't right. know about that. I okay. wouldn't trust Google <laughs> to All encrypt right. your email for you. All right. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. I mean, if you want to dig up that info. But either way, even if Google's saying, we're encrypting your email. Yeah, but then they could still turn it over. They the likely are the ones yeah. holding the encryption keys. Right. So, okay. Yeah, I wouldn't there trust There are lots that. of people that, uh, you know, out there who's... Uh, Email accounts, I think that whoever is going to attempt to keep the world, make the world a safer place, should have access to. There's dangerous characters out there, and um, they should have that. The problem is, is the war on drugs, generally. The problem is, is that... Uh, you know the, the the government in the in the guise of making us safer uh, puts us at more risk with their war on drugs. In the Gmail account, Alford found emails to a man in Bastrop, Texas, seeking to rent out his house. On Ulbricht's computer, there's a journal entry describing how he went to Bastrop to grow psychedelic mushrooms. Items found on the Silk Road expense spreadsheet include a clean room HEPA filter for $89.54 and Ulbricht's $1,150 Samsung 700Z laptop. Alford found corresponding receipts for those items from Amazon in Ulbricht's Gmail. The Gmail account also reveals more about Ulbricht's travels. He bought an itinerary through CheapAir.com, which took him from Austin, Texas, to Sydney, Australia. He probably used Bitcoin to do that. The return ticket from Sydney to Austin, not back in 2010, they wouldn't no, have had okay. that. Okay, well, CheapAir, uh, interestingly, does that though. The return ticket from Sydney to Austin, which had a stop in San Francisco, was for April of 2012. During that time, he also traveled to Asia, and in late January of 2012, Ulbricht wrote a Facebook post that said, quote, surprise, I'm in Thailand now. Yeah, that's where you should have stayed, buddy. Han Hanoi was way too cold, and the allure of a warm beach was way too much, unquote. Alford was only on the stand for about 90 minutes today, as the jurors were released at noon due to the impending blizzard in New York. The trial is set to continue on Thursday, so I guess now it is no longer a question as to whether or not Wednesday will be happening. Alford's testimony seems to give the defense even more of a hill to climb. So, yeah. you, so you've got Ulbricht ostensibly making posts two days before the Silk Road's launch. Of course, we already know he was the creator of the Silk Road, so that's not you know shocking information to anyone, but it is an interesting bit of information as to how they found out who Ross Ulbricht was. It's cool, though, that it kind of takes the thunder out of the prosecution's argument. I mean, ostensibly, they spent a lot of time and money mm. researching this and figuring it out and putting the pieces together, and by one simple admission, yeah, I'm the guy who started the website. Yep. All of that is deflated. Like, Well, now they have to prove that he... Uh, that essentially, I, I I would guess what they're trying to do is is to avoid the murder charges that have not yet actually been mm -hmm. levied in Maryland um, for murder for hire stuff and uh, in the uh, kingpin charge. So if they can create a reasonable doubt that. Ulbricht wasn't the only one who had access to the uh, Dread Pirate Roberts account on uh, the Silk Road, then they can create that reasonable doubt there as far as him that being That he was the one pit. who hired yeah. the hitman. If, it, if, in fact, it happened. At this point, it's un, uh, unfiled, but the judge is letting it going, go forward. So I'm interested, in, I'm interested in all this. We'll just see. We will see, and we will let you know as we learn more. John Bush from the Liberty Beat is back in New York City. Uh, he was in the courtroom today, and if you want to go to thelibertybeat.com, there's a link there right toward the right at the top of the page. Uh, Silk Road trial coverage live, I think, is what it says, mm -hmm. and that's a great page to just kind of check back to. That's how I found this Ars Technica story. 
of course, you can always Google Russ Ulbricht, but uh, John Bush is doing a great job down there. And in fact, uh, they're doing fundraising to help promote uh, the, I guess, you know, it's not cheap to fly to New York City and stay in Manhattan. Yeah, he's staying in Manhattan uh, in order to cover this. And I'm, I'm hoping he's able to find a you know a place to crash in Manhattan rather than stay in a Manhattan hotel. Uh, but, you know, I've actually sent some money to, to John to help make this happen because mm. I think the work that he's doing is is very, very important here, and I think he's he's doing great work. Uh, so I don't know what the easiest way to get to that fundraiser page is. I suspect it's up at thelibertybeat.com, but they're offering some pretty cool perks. It's one of those Indiegogo fundraisers where okay. you, know, you, you get perks for certain levels of donation, and uh, in this case, I think 25 bucks gets you the very cool-looking I Am Dread Pirate Roberts t-shirt. Uh, which I'm excited to to get mine. I want to I'm going to wear that to the Liberty Forum event coming up in March. But it's got on the front in big block lettering, "I am Dread Pirate Roberts," and then on the back side, it has the Silk Road Green Camel uh, logo. So, so cool! What a cool shirt. Uh, of course, I I put the same kind of graphic up on the Free Talk Live Facebook profile, but. Uh, t- t- I'm just looking here real quick. I don't see an obvious donation link. I will find that, and then I'll post the donation link to our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. You can access those by going to news.freetalklive.com. So I'll throw that up there here in a little bit. Anything else, gentlemen, that you want to get out there about the Silk Road case while we're still on the topic here? I really hope uh, the best for the the family in this circumstance because I think Ross is going down. Well, God has blessed his mother for being so great to stand by him through all of this. Even she did not know, apparently, that he was the creator of the Silk Road. That she had, I, I believe it's the case that she didn't know that going into the trial. Hmm. And so she found that out just like the rest of us did on the, on the first day of trial. And she's still sticking by him. Yeah, I wonder if she was proud of that. Like, well, what an achievement. <laughs> she should be. Yeah. Because it is an achievement. Uh, it's, I, I would say this, the Silk Road is one of the greatest achievements in recent human history as far as making the black market a safer place. I mean, Ross Ulbricht has saved lives by creating and operating the Silk Road. Whether or not he operated it the whole time is really the only question at this point in the trial. But what he did there was uh, was amazing work. Yeah, and he's changed the game as well because it. while I might argue it's it was only a matter of time before the black market moved online, being the first to market inspired a lot of people, maybe got oh, it out yeah. there sooner than it would be otherwise. Yeah, and every penny they earned or Bitcoin they earned, they absolutely deserved it. And unfortunately, the feds have a lot of them now. But maybe there's still some out there, and maybe that other Ross Ulbricht, or not Ross Ulbricht, that other uh, Dread Pirate Roberts is still out there as well. We still don't know what the whole truth is behind the Silk Road, but as it's revealed or as more allegations are revealed in court, we will let you know the trial continues on Thursday of this week. TheLibertyBeat.com, great place to go and get the latest as it breaks, and we'll continue to uh, relate it to you here on the air. Hour number two is on the way. We'll talk about ways, an app that the police want to stop. It's Free Talk Live. It's all coming up. Before girls' night out, my eczema flared up. Ugh, I felt like canceling. But then I tried Cortisone 10 Eczema Relief. It's specially formulated for eczema and has 1% hydrocortisone, the strongest non-prescription itch medicine for fast, lasting itch relief. It quickly stopped the itch and soothed my red, dry, flaky skin. With Cortisone 10 Eczema Relief, I was ready for girls' night out, and it was the best one ever. Cortisone 10 Eczema Relief. Feel the heal. Use as directed. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, January 26, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,295, silver at $18.32, and Bitcoin is trading around $282.71. Today's Bitcoin price is brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. The Liberty Beat is sponsored in part by WatchMyBit.com, the first ever micropayment-based video service. If you're a content creator, visit WatchMyBit.com to learn how you can use Bitcoin to generate revenue for your art. That's WatchMyBit.com. In the news, WikiLeaks is demanding answers after Google recently revealed they handed over emails and data from employees of the journalistic outfit to the U.S. government. The information was part of a secret search warrant issued in March 2012, and Google was bound by a gag order from revealing the request. Now, WikiLeaks lawyer Michael Ratner of the Center for Constitutional Rights is asking Google's executive chairman to detail what materials were given to the FBI and whether or not the company challenged the warrant. Julian Assange, WikiLeaks founder and editor-in-chief, said the actions by the FBI were part of a larger conspiracy case against him and his staff. If I thought it would save an American life, I'd do things far worse than anything that made it into that report. I might even stick a power drill through somebody's knee. That's what Michael, an anonymous former military contractor, told the anti-media in a recent interview. The former contractor discussed his role in torturing suspected terrorists in the Middle East. Michael says the recent Senate report on the use of torture is giving soldiers a bad name. He goes on to admit to participating in waterboarding, sleep deprivation, and beatings of detainees. For more on this exclusive interview, visit theantimedia.org. The public feud between police accountability activists and the Arlington, Texas Police Department continues as two members of Texas Cop Block were arrested Saturday afternoon for exercising their First and Second Amendment rights simultaneously. Officers can be seen warning activists to put all weapons, including their openly carried black powder pistols, back into their vehicles while they film the police or they would be subject to arrest. Two activists did not comply to their orders and were arrested for disorderly conduct and interfering with police business. They were bailed out in a matter of hours. Your job, your home, your car, your money. All of these things provide you with a sense of security. But what about your family security? What have you done to prepare if all of these things were suddenly gone? eFoods Direct has the food security you need. For every emergency, eFoods Direct is food security. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash LibertyBeat or call 800-620-5520 and mention Liberty Beat for 50% off their food preparation planning packs. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, January 26, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. 18 people are dead, including a 10-year-old boy, during protests in Egypt Sunday, marking the fourth anniversary of the country's uprising in 2011. 35 others were reported injured during the protests, while 140 were arrested. The Telegraph reports the violence happened in the neighborhood that served as the battleground that led to the ousting of Hosni Mubarak from his seat of power. On Wednesday, the Dallas City Council will vote on whether or not to discontinue water fluoridation. After heavy lobbying from local activists, the City Council will take up the controversial issue and decide whether or not to resign their contract. In early December, Mayor Mike Rawlings delayed a vote at the request of Councilman Sheffy Cadane. Cadane has been a vocal opponent of water fluoridation, stating the city can save a million dollars by voting no. A British biotechnology company is hoping to gain approval to release genetically engineered mosquitoes in the Florida Keys. Oxitec 
has patented a method of breeding a mosquito with genes from the herpes simplex virus and E. coli bacteria, as well as coral and cabbage. The release of the GE mosquito is an attempt at fighting viruses by having the mosquitoes bite residents. The Food and Drug Administration would have to approve the trials for the insects could be released. Over 130,000 people have signed a petition to stop the experiment. The Liberty Beat is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, live each Friday night at 10 o'clock Eastern. Hot topics from a unique Liberty perspective. Catch it at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, January 26, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. This is the Onion Week in Review. A month after the death of leader Kim Jong-il, North Korea's 24.5 million citizens have returned to their regular daily routines this week, holding a festive synchronized disco jump rope gala in Pyongyang's main public square. Life in the hermetic communist nation is reportedly beginning to normalize following the protracted mourning period, with citizens once again donning their brightly colored uniforms and performing intricate gymnastics routines in perfect unison. It is an inspiring sight to see so many loyal citizens find the strength to unfurl their long silken streamers and do dozens of tandem backflips set to dance music. Observers reported that new North Korean leader Kim Jong-un nodded once in approval of the disco jump rope gala, signaling an official transfer of power. A recent study from the Centers for Disease Control finds that over 100 million children are being exposed to harmful levels of stupidity in their own homes. Hear the debate about secondhand ignorance on the next In the Know. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial on in toll-free here and bring up anything you'd like at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Well, if you don't yet have the Waze app on your phone, that's W-A-Z-E, you may want to get that app by the time we're done with this conversation because in the news today, apparently some police are very upset about this app. And if uh, if an app is upsetting the police, that to me is an endorsement and a good enough reason <laughs> to download it, especially if the police actually get their way and manage to have this app pulled from the Google App Store. Uh, Derek J., what's the latest and where is it coming from? Well, according to Eileen Sullivan at the Associated Press published today, law enforcement wants popular police tracking app disabled. Mm. That's the headline. Law enforcement is concerned that the popular Waze mobile traffic app by Google Inc., which provides real-time road conditions. Google makes Waze? I had no idea until I read this article. Wow. And it's unclear to me whether or not they originally created the app or maybe it was like bought or by they them. They purchased it. Yeah. yeah. It provides real-time road conditions, but it can also be used to hunt and harm police. <laughs> that's, what, that's what the law enforcement I suppose saying. it could be. Uh, that wasn't my first thought when I heard about this. I mean, uh, if you wanted to find police I, and kill them, I guess, then uh, that's they that. They such a paranoid bunch. Yeah. Well, well, they, Google they, Maps they also has people all day long. Of course they're paranoid. Only thieves, uh, you know, thieves are the ones that first think of stealing. Good point. Waze is a combination of GPS navigation and social networking. 50 million users in 200 countries turn to the free service for warnings about nearby congestion, car accidents, speed traps, traffic cameras, construction zones, potholes, stalled vehicles, or unsafe weather conditions. And I am one of these users. I use this app. And I've used it for over a year, and I love it. You, Derek J. Yes. Okay. Waze, oh, the, right, yeah, that's a, that was a break from the article. Waze users <laughs> mark police who are generally working in public spaces on maps without much distinction other than visible or hidden. And hmm. uh, I, Derek J., having used this app, can tell you, yeah, it's, it's tough to, you see a police officer on the side of the road, maybe you can snap a, a picture of him. And uh, uploading, yeah, not if you're driving, but uh, a passenger could be in the car and they mm -hmm. could they could take a picture of That's it. That's pretty vigilant. 
Right. You have to be on it. But there are enough people using this app that it actually happens. I mean, even in rural places, really? even in areas like New Hampshire, where hmm. I'll, I'll see this. And uh, it comes up with a little notification when you're about to come up to a police officer where it says, um, hey, there's a police up, uh, up ahead. And once you pass it, it Does prompts it give you, you like a little warning? Like a yeah. Little, it's like a little chime, like a... Yeah, what, like what's ding. It, like, and a little... little pic- <laughs> <laughs> no oinks. Uh, but the... The app does little come up with a little police face, and it says, you know, like, po- you're approaching police, they like, and it has, like, a countdown, like, in five, four, oh, three, wow. and here you go, and it says, uh, do you, did you see him, or was he hidden, or was it visible, is he still there? Hmm. And, you know, even when you're driving, it's not that hard to, like, push one little button that says, like, yep, still there, or nope, not there anymore. Yeah. And that's a very helpful way to inform other drivers on the road. So it does combine GPS and social networking. Even if you're a passenger, you can interact with other drivers on the road. It's pretty cool. Crowdsourcing, I guess, would be a more accurate term, right? Because you're using the group, the crowd, to figure these things out. And it relies on people's honesty, and it works pretty well. So back to the article, users see a police icon, but it's not immediately clear whether police are there for a speed trap, a sobriety checkpoint, or a lunch break. Mm -hmm. To some in law enforcement, this feature amounts to a stalking app for people (laughs) who want to harm police. They want Google to disable that feature. Jeez. The growing concern is the latest twist in Google's complicated relationship with government and law enforcement. It places... The internet giant, again, at the center of an ongoing global debate about public safety, consumer rights, and privacy. And uh, just to break from the article for a bit, that's what I was bringing up, Ian, earlier when I said, you know, can't Google encrypt your email? That's one of the things... Law enforcement's been complaining about their encryption on Android phones right. and even Apple's and Apple. iPhones. Yeah, saying like, your encryption is too tough. We can't break it. We need to be able to break into people's privacy anytime we want. Yeah, that's true. There was some. There were some headlines about that a few months ago when Apple did it. Google followed up and said, we're doing it too. Uh, and that would be total phone encryption, meaning the entire file system on a phone after a certain version of the Android operating system will be by default I believe, enabled on all phones. I think that's that's the case. If not, it'll be available, and you can enable it. But I think it might have been by default enabled. And yeah, that did upset the police. But at the same time, I still wouldn't trust Google not to hand the keys over to them. Well, we got another paranoid cop here uh, returning to the Associated Press. Los Angeles Police Chief Charlie Beck complained in a letter to Google's chief executive on December 30th. He wrote a letter. He wrote a letter cute? on, like, the, the day before New Year's Eve. Like, this guy's a lot of fun. Yeah. The the ways that ways could be, quote, misused by those with criminal intent to endanger police <laughs> officers and the community. Because <laughs> it's as so a result. <laughs> it's so hard to find the police. I mean, as though you need to have ways to ascertain where the police are at any given moment. I mean, in, in a lot of cities, they're prevalent. It's not hard to find any police because they're harassing people everywhere. And so just drive around for a little bit and you'll find them. Yeah, I suppose if you wanted to find police, right? Like, you're, uh, today's the day I'm going to go out killing some cops. Yeah. I will stock my uh, panel van uh, full of uh, the weaponry that I'm going to, uh, you know, go after them with, and and I will find cops today. Oh, I better get my, my Waze app, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll find them that way. Oh, my goodness. Google has disabled the feature to find police. What will I, I do? I guess <laughs> I'm just going to have to put all the guns back in my house and go about my normal day, <laughs> you know, because I won't be able to kill cops today. Now, I suspect you'd probably right. get in the van and uh, drop by the gas station, make sure you had a full tank, and then go and uh, start looking around for some police. If you that's could start at the police station. That's a good place to start. Yeah, maybe to. Google should disable that feature on their maps and not tell people where police stations are. <laughs> The Los Angeles Police Department said Monday it had not heard back from Google Good. about whether it had addressed Beck's concerns. I hope <laughs> I it hope got they shredded. Don't. Yeah, I hope they don't write back. Don't Google, waste your time. Here's I don't your know answer. If Google would, will know what to do with a letter. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, hey, email us, dude. Google purchased Waze for $966 million wow. in 2013. I don't suspect they're going to be wow. really delighted to uh, downgrade features, though. Yeah, let's disable stuff now. Right, let's disable one of the most useful parts of this program because otherwise, you know, besides the what does it do? Police, weather, 
road condition Potholes. construction zones, traffic cameras, speed traps, stalled vehicles, okay. which is a very helpful one for me. I, that's one I've used as well. Like, it's helpful to know if there's a car that's broken down up ahead, uh, not only so that you can reroute, mm-hmm. but also so that you can move over to the other lane well ahead of time. So you're not yeah, like, swerving true. into traffic. And, you know, or, or so if I see a bunch of lights up ahead, I know that, like, not a cop, just someone who's broken down. Right. It's fine. Okay. This is the equivalent, by the way, just a little flashback here from before I was born. Mark, you were very young at this time when uh, the United States was in its citizens band radio heyday in yeah. the late 1970s. Breaker, breaker, one nine. Right. Um, <laughs> there were uh, citizens band radio was essentially the pr- uh, the predecessor almost to the Internet, to That's crowdsourcing. That's a 10 good buddy. Uh, so you <laughs> would have people give out information and frequently they would use code. So like, oh, we got a smoking a brown wrapper, uh, you know, smoking an orange wrapper up here. And that they would even be a- got a bear in the air. That would be a uh, state police officer, Smokey Bear, which is what that uh, that particular lingo means. And then in a brown wrapper means it's an undercover unit. In an orange, in this case, or an orange wrapper would be an orange undercover car. Um, so they would, uh, you know, wow. put this information out over the two, the the citizens band radio. And of course, the main people who were doing this, and still do to some extent, are truck drivers. And I imagine a lot of Waze users are also truck drivers, where the drivers are communicating with one another and everybody else to let people know where the cops are and how to, you know, how to drive safely. You think truckers communicate via CB as much as they used to? Because I would think now with all the entertainment. Uh, <laughs> For instance, I mean, they you can, still have CBs. I'm sure they have CBs. Yeah, I've heard just, of on it. I've I, heard I'd of. be listening to audiobooks and MP3s the whole time. Well, you're not having an active conversation usually the entire time you're driving, but if there is a road condition, uh, I've heard drivers get on CB. I've, when we've driven down to New York City, I've taken the CB with us and, and monitored just to hear what people were saying. So they're still out there. 855 450 free. It's easier to key up a microphone than to hit a smartphone sure. and hit a bunch of buttons. More coming up. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800 691 6129. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, "Let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas." There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 
101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at JuicyJuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kid should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free here if you want. Take control of the airwaves. Bring up whatever's on your mind at 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. Express Coin is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies. Be they Bitcoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, Dogecoin, whatever you want. It's wow. fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're a licensed money services business, so you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about any illegalities like what we're talking about here with uh, with the Russ Albrecht and the uh, the Silk Road trial. So you can get your cryptocurrencies with a money order, check, wire transfer, or you can make a deposit at a local credit union that has shared banking. Just start off at ExpressCoin.com. Whether in the U.S. or Canada, it's ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading the app at ExpressCoin.com. You use coupon code FTL, and you can get up to $40 worth of your cryptocurrency with no fee at all. ExpressCoin.com. Coupon code FTL. All right. 855-450-FREE. Derek J is here talking about Waze. That's W-A-Z-E if you want to search for it on your smartphone. Um, is there an Apple version of this? Because you did mention it's a Google product. I don't know. Um, it's definitely out for Android phones. That much I know for sure. And the police, they are upset. Derek, you've got the story. Yeah, and they're crazy paranoid about this, or at least one outfit is from the Los Angeles uh, Police Department. You can rest assured there are probably more of them that are upset as well. Yeah, the police chief, Charlie Beck, he wrote this letter to Google, and uh, he's claiming that people are using this app to hunt down police, or could. Right, because you've heard of all those stories about the cop killers who first did a search on Waze. <laughs> <laughs> According to the article from the Associated Press, there are no known connections between any attack on police and Waze. Although Beck, this chief of police in Los Angeles, said Waze was used in the killing of two New York Police Department officers on December 20th. You remember? Oh. The Instagram account of the gunman in that case included a screenshot from Waze, along with other messages threatening police. <laughs> Investigators do not believe the shooter, Ismael Brinsley, used ways to ambush the NYPD officers, in part because police say Brinsley tossed his cell phone more than two miles from where he shot the officers. <laughs> in his letter to Google, Beck said that Brinsley had been using the Waze app to track police since early December. Wow. Yeah, tracking them and then what? <laughs> like, to avoid traffic like the rest of us? I have no idea. Uh, just, tracking them. The police move around throughout yeah. the day. I mean, so what <laughs> if he was tracking them earlier in the month? Quote, I am confident your company did not intend the Waze app to be a means to allow those who wish to commit crimes to use the unwitting Waze community as their lookouts for the location of police officers, Beck wrote. Some officers, like Sheriff Mike Brown of Bedford County, Virginia, think it's only a matter of time before Waze is used to hunt and harm police. Quote, The police community needs to coordinate an effort to have the owner, Google, 
act like the responsible corporate citizen they've always been oh. and remove this feature from the application even before any litigation or statutory action. Just do it because we say right, so. Right, right. What are they going to litigate exactly here? I mean, there's nothing illegal about sharing information, at least not yet. Uh, there's nothing <laughs> illegal that I know of about sharing information with people about where the police are. We do this stuff all the time here in the Keene area. If the cops are up the street uh, here at the LRN studios, I've, I've, as I've driven by them before, I've gotten on our two-way radio system and announced that. I didn't have ways running because, again, I, I have the app, but I'm never in the mindset to actually use the thing because it drains the battery so bad. Uh, on my phone, it's a, it's a kind of a disincentive to to use the app. I can't remember which court has ruled it, but they have ruled uh, b- multiple times that it is a freedom of speech to stand on the side of the road with a sign saying "speed trap ahead." Yes. So that uh, doesn't mean they won't harass you over it, but right. yes, that should be your well, freedom. The, the police are going to come and talk to you, and uh, you know, of course, it's their job to put people in jail, and the, the result of talking to them could be, could be not very good at all. As a matter of fact, we had the Bartholomew brothers uh, had a situation where they went to the side of the road and they held a sign that said taxation is theft. They wore the Guy Fox mask. And when police came, they were pretty non-responsive to the police. Mm-hmm. And that resulted in their arrest, uh, which is contrary to the law in uh, California. And the jury found them guilty. Anyway. Yep. Anyway, even though the law was clear, they hadn't broken it. Yep, that's right. In my experience, drivers will also flash their headlights if there are yes. police in speed traps uh, that they've just passed. That's so correct. they can let me know that that's coming. And I'll do the same to other drivers if I just pass a cop and, you know, hey, I'm going to flash the next couple of drivers I see and let them know to slow down. And aren't there some states where that's illegal? Uh, no, I do not believe. No? I, I, be, well, I believe that there's been court rulings on light flashing, that too. It's, that it's legal. That okay. it's legal. I would think that would be much more difficult for cops to to figure out, but um, now and then, one of them probably sees it and uh, probably pulled somebody over and mm-hmm. gave them a ticket for it or whatever. But um, I, I think that that's, you know, when it comes to light flashing, people will try to communicate a couple of, th- a few things with light flashing. Um, sometimes they're just being a jerk. Uh, <laughs> sometimes they're, you know, telling you to turn your lights on, That's telling correct. you to tell, tell you to turn your high beams down. Sometimes they're telling to tell you there's a police officer up there. I, I, I'm telling people to move over. Get out of the left that's lane. It. If they're behind That's what I'm you, doing. If they're behind you, they're you're likely telling you, hey, this lane, this lane here is for passing, and you yeah. shouldn't be in it. Yeah. Google declined to comment. And directed questions to a Waze spokeswoman, Julie Mosler, who said the company thinks deeply about safety and security. She said Waze works with the New York Police Department and others around the world by sharing information. Quote, these relationships keep citizens safe, promote faster emergency response, and help alleviate traffic congestion. Right. Keep citizens safe from the police because people know that the police are not their friends. Uh, People are afraid of the police. And that's the that's the reason why this uh, this feature exists, because it empowers people. You need them. You need them. Right. I mean, I don't it it depends on the situation. But when you're on the road, likely they are your enemy. Usually when you're on the road, when you're on the road, your preference is likely to avoid uh, passing a police officer simply because you never you're always like, "Uh, what am I doing? That's wrong. (laughs) They've got these find something. They've got these speed limits all over America. In many cases are set artificially low. Right. Like they don't Mm -hmm. they don't sort of conform to the way traffic is on the road and that that makes it very difficult for people because you're always trying to make sure that you're not going too fast so the associated press author here eileen sullivan wrote to the new york police department about ways but they didn't respond to any of her questions <laughs> Google has a complicated relationship with government and law enforcement. The company worked closely with the Obama administration to defend itself against hacking by China's government, and it is regularly compelled to turn over to police worldwide copies of emails or other information about its customers. Last year, after disclosures that the National Security Agency had illicitly broken into Google's Overseas internet communication lines, Google and other technology companies rolled out encryption for consumers, which the U.S. <laughs> government said could hamper law enforcement investigations. <laughs> we deserve to be able to poke around in your information. No, it's for it's your ours. own good. It's for your own good, Mark. Every just trying time to keep you safe. these governments constantly reveal that they believe they own you. They own you, they own your property, they own your land. 
Who who else could they go through your stuff? All right, we'll come back with more here in moments. You can also bring up whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Coming up, travel bans. Yeah, they happen in New England. We'll tell you what it's all about. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-467-5090. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate Free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-467-5090. That's 1-800-467-5090. Call 1-800-467-5090. Do you ever say, I could care less, when you really mean the opposite? You mean to say, I couldn't care less. It's a common mistake. You are judged by how you speak, especially if you're looking for work with so many more applicants than openings now. But even if you're not, avoiding common misstatements will help you make the most of the dozens of conversations and transactions that crowd your daily routine. So whatever you say, don't say whatever as a single word sentence. It's the most annoying expression in the American English language, according to a recent poll. And avoid cliches like the plague. Just kidding. But seriously, at the end of the day, you'll want to avoid this scenario sounding like everyone else. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Free Talk Live. There's only one place you could have sex without everybody else knowing about it. <laughs> That's in the bathroom. It Unless was... you want to go back into the crew quarters, which might give you bonus points. The Mile High Club awards you, I suppose, based on the amount of times that you've entered into the club. Not only do you want to be in the club, you want to be the top dog. Yeah, right? you got to be sure. a premier yeah. member. So I would think there'd have to be points for location on the plane who you encountered with. Were you sure. there with your girlfriend? Did you take her into the bathroom? Oh. Did you manage to get a stewardess into the bathroom with you? Did you manage trick. to yeah. get uh, the girl that you just happened to be sitting next to on the plane? I mean, so all of these things could Yeesh. be worth... <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> to be a part of the Mile High Club, what's the criteria? You have Copulate to... Copulate in the air. Yeah. What defines copulation? Who has to have an orgasm? Does there have to be an orgasm? Or do you or just have to stick it in and pull it out? Is it right. just penetration? Bam, bam. We're yeah. out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Mile yeah. High Club, give We're me my in. card. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited here to take control of the airwaves. The number is 855-450-FREE. We've also had some folks participating with us on Skype tonight. Our Skype username 
is lrn.fm. Just send a contact request over. It will be approved. And once that's done, you can easily call on Skype from that point forward. Joining you in studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. Derek J. And Mark. We've been talking with Derek J. about Waze, which is a a controversial app apparently now, uh, at least within police departments, because police officers are paranoid as hell, and they believe that... uh, That is just a broad blanket statement. Uh, You're right. What do you mean? That's a very broad blanket statement. But in my uh, observation, uh, many police are very, very paranoid. And uh, in the case here in... Security is their job, right? Like security people are paid to be paranoid. Okay. I'm just telling you, that's my impression of uh, of the police, is that they're paranoid that everybody's out to get them, uh, when, of course, actually being a police officer is not even one of the top 10 most dangerous jobs in the United States. Being a roofer or a construction person is much more dangerous uh, than being a police officer. Well, you you sort of uh, so you you had a sort of double comparison here. You uh, said that they're afraid people are out to get them, and then you said that it's not one of the most dangerous jobs in America. Yeah, and that's a true statement. Both of those are true. St- uh, well, the question is is that probably more roofers, uh, few, uh, more police are killed for being police than roofers are killed for being roofers. I'll give mm. you that. Just so saying. what? Uh, anyway, they are paranoid, and uh, this is there's more evidence here where multiple police officers are very upset about ways which allows people to mark the locations of police as you're driving down the road. If you spot a cop, you just hit a simple couple buttons on ways, and you can you know send notice out to all other ways users about the position of that officer. When another ways user drives by that same location, ways will inquire: Is the officer still present? And then the uh, driver can answer affirmative or not and that helps keep the the files up to date it helps keep the map up to date so to speak now i'm curious derek j you're a regular user of ways i am not i do have the app but i've just never really gotten in the habit of using it mm-hmm. i don't travel that often and when i do i just don't think about ways i, I maybe i should but uh, i kind of i kind of tell myself well you know it t- takes a lot of toll on the battery but i am in my car and i do have a cable that i could use to sort of charge the phone as as I'm using Waze, and then I tell myself, "Oh, it's New Hampshire. There's nobody around here that uses Waze. There's they a very, do very low population zone." But you're saying they're they're still using it. Yeah. So so maybe it's worth a, a third look uh, for for me. But is there a way to actually pull up a map of all police locations, or is it that uh, just kind of as you drive, it will inform you of where the police are nearby you? Like, could I pull a map up right now on Waze and have it tell me where all the cops have been reported in Cheshire County? I don't know. I've never tried to do that. Typically, you know, I'm just using it for my own driving experience. Right. I'm not looking for the police. I, I'm trying to avoid them. So right. while I'm driving. Uh, I just see what cops are coming my way. Right. They, apparently, they think it's the cop killer app. Like, show me the nearest police officer who doesn't have his partner around, and preferably unarmed. <laughs> yeah, because I suspect that's not the case with Waze. Uh, and, I mean, I'll poke around in, in the app here and see if there's there's any evidence for that. Because the way the police are making it sound is like you could use this app to hunt down and target the police. But my understanding of Waze is you only really get presented with the police's location when it's nearby you. Yeah, and it almost never happens happens to me uh, driving around New Hampshire, I just don't encounter very many police. So typically I'm using Waze as a way to get from point A to point B, uh, the smartest way, avoiding any tolls or collisions or whatever. You know, it's not about, it's not all about police is what I'm saying. It's it's more about a replacement for Google Maps for me, which is what I would use to drive around anyway now don't get me wrong i think it would be cool if the app did have that feature if you could sure uh use ways to sort of be a cop blocker right like you could <laughs> you could pull up ways because we had uh the guys from arlington cop block or one of the guys from arlington texas cop block called last night and oh, nice. they were talking about how they kind of you know in arlington which is a fairly large city of four hundred thousand people uh that they have there's different quadrants and they kind of know where the police like to hang out in certain neighborhoods and where they target so they they're able to more easily find the police and they cop block while armed correct that's well some of them do but okay. yeah yeah um that's what got a couple of them arrested uh just recently on actually this weekend and so Hardcore. if there was a feature like that for ways i think it would be fantastic for cop block purposes because yeah. then you could use all of the crowdsourcing reporting of the locations of police to actually go there as cop blockers and you know investigate if it's not a feature i wonder if there's enough uh like open source material on this that you could just add it as a feature like oh here you go i don't know if it's well, open source yeah. at, at, 
I, the but government you, currently has satellites and they can track people around. Now, I remember one of them came, to, uh, one government agent came to our school when I was in uh, junior high. That's what we called it. We didn't call it middle school hmm. where I went and said that uh, that they can see the dirt underneath your fingernails. I don't know if this oh, guy's please. exaggerating or what he was uh, doing, but the claim was is that you know the government can observe you from the sky. And I'm pretty sure they can observe... You know they can observe quite a bit. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't imagine it's too. We're too far from companies, big companies like Google, being able to do the same thing. What about Google just looking from the sky at police officers? Uh, you know the police cars moving around and stuff. What's mm. that going to be like? Um, are they going to you know are they going to be able to determine if it's a police car? Because if it's a regular black and white, they're going to be able to tell re- relatively easily. Let's go to Nicole. She's in New York. You're on Free Talk Live, Nicole, with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. Hello. Hi, Nicole. Go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to say you guys were just um, asking about if there is a way to see all the police reports. Um, There is, actually. If you pull up the reports menu, you can click on either all reports or you can specifically look for police or accidents or, you know, whatever specific uh, you know, area you're looking for. Huh. I don't see the reports menu. Maybe it's not an obvious uh, feature. I do have the, the program open now, and we, we probably can't go through a bunch of technical support stuff here, but you're saying you have seen this. Now, how far do they let you see the officer's locations? Um, that's something that you would have to add in your settings. You can go, um, you know, all reports from all your friends, or you can go like 20 miles out, whatever you have it set for. Huh. Okay. Awesome. I'll have to look for that because it's not... I don't see anything about reports. but So you've used Waze. You're a regular uh, participant? Yep, every day. And how is it over in Rochester? Are there a number of other people on the roads who are doing it? Is it a fairly useful thing for you? It must be if you keep using it, right? Yeah, it's really useful. Um, There's been times there was a really bad storm, and I was actually able to even communicate with other drivers where it was just really, really heavy traffic, and I looked you know, up the road a bit, and it said, vehicle stopped in the road and so i could um send a a message on the map and said which lane Hmm. and they told me a left lane so i could veer to the right yeah that's the other cool feature that you can send messages to other drivers who are on the road like you have a a profile uh hopefully it's your passenger who's typing for you yeah that was that's kind of my concern about this is that you know there's going to be so many uh uh, i use it at red lights you know you can type at red lights What's yeah, I, and I never do it. I I have been a passenger when I do take the time to type to other people because it's just too much time away from the road for me to do it otherwise. Well, thanks for sharing your experience, Nicole. Any other thoughts you want to get out there? Uh, no, nope, that's about it. Appreciate hearing from you tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Scott. He's in Indiana. Scott, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, Jay, and Mark. Hey, Ian, Mark, and Derek, Jay. How's it going? Welcome. Hey. Go ahead, Scott. Hey, uh, I just had a quick question. Anybody heard anything about uh, Gary Johnson going in 2016 again on the Libertarian Party? <laughs> I'd say there's a good chance. Yeah, uh, it look it has. He has that look. Every indication is is that's what he's going to do. He is the uh, received more votes than any other Libertarian candidate in history. Isn't that right? Mm, I think Ed Clark currently has. I th- oh, God, it was one or the other. Okay, so Gary Johnson either has the greatest percentage ever received by a Libertarian candidate or the greatest number of votes, and Ed Clark in 1980 has the other one. I forget which okay. one is which. Will you be throwing your vote away for Gary Johnson, Scott? Uh, sure, sure, Will. I threw my vote away for him in 2012. <laughs> I decided I needed a, a clean conscience. So. At this point, that's where I'm at, too. Uh, anything can happen in this political game, but I tend to be sort of on board with what you're saying there. I Scott, think we'll, kind of, go, go ahead. ahead. Uh, I can hang on or... Well, I was going to say, we will certainly let you know more as uh, the Libertarian Party, you know, selects its presidential candidate. We've got a ways to go. And I know our very own Daryl W. Perry will be char- uh, challenging Gary Johnson in 2016 for that Libertarian nomination. So we will see how that goes. And thank you, Scott, for your call tonight. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live at 855 450 free. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. Yeah! 
This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Inventory isn't about products, kid. It's about money. Products sitting on shelves is money sitting on shelves. I hate overstock. I hate understock. I hate wasting time. I hate wasting money. That's why I love Granger. Granger Keep Stock Solutions help us manage our facility's inventory so we have exactly what we need when we need it. No more, no less. It's inventory management my way. Get it? Got it? Good. Visit Granger.com slash Keepstock for more information. Granger for the ones who get it done. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just $19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you PorcupineRealEstate.com if you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free right here. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, coming up tonight, Mark, uh, you want to talk about fat shaming? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I've got. All right, we'll talk about that. Uh, <laughs> the toll-free number is 855-453. We've got Skype as well. Skype username is lrn.fm as we go to your calls and thoughts. Don't forget, you can join us online and support the show by shopping with us. You go to shop.freetalklive.com. 
and you enter uh, Amazon, you'll find different Amazon links there. There's Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, and Amazon US. You just go to the right Amazon for you and then get your shopping taken care of. And Free Talk Live gets a cut of the sale. It is that simple, and it makes a big difference for us when you do it. So please start your shopping experience online at shop. Dot freetalklive.com. Use we... it every time. It's an extra click, but it does so much for us. Yeah, it really makes a big difference. So uh, please do check that out. Let's go to Perry in the meantime. Perry listening in Nashua, New Hampshire, to our affiliate down there, WSMN. Hey, Perry. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's on your mind tonight, Perry? Um, I want to go off to the left of the right, whatever it is. Yeah, stop this. Um, we can get back on the subject. What is my main concern is we have this blizzard coming in. It is no longer a storm warning. It's they they took that off early this morning, and I haven't heard the latest news. It's it's my impending at W impending snowmageddon. Impending. <laughs> yeah, we actually yeah, happen yeah. to be in New Hampshire. I don't know if you're aware of that, but Free Talk Live yeah, is... Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you're over here to the left of the state. Yep. Yes, yep. I'm We're right in here. In, you have to go over Temple Mountain to get to you from Nashua. That yeah. is the separator of the state uh, yep. where we are, as a matter of fact. So one thing that we can't do on Free Talk Live is provide local weather updates. Uh, that's something that we can't do um, because it's just not interesting to the people who are in California or Ohio. Well, but this is a big storm, Florida. and it, it's been reported you, you on you all day. Free Talk Live is... Indeed, you're right. That's right. Yep, you're right. It's... You, you don't have like a, the local weather forecast. You you can't. Well, no, I've got it right in front I, of me. I am but not computer. Yeah, I, I right. am not computer literate. Let me give you. A, let me it's give you a hit rundown. You like a freight train starting at ten o'clock. Yeah, let me give you a rundown, Perry. There's going to be some snow uh, over the next twenty four hours. <laughs> and it could be well, a jerk. Well, yeah, it could be more hours. than the average snowfall, right? Like we don't know. I mean, there, there's always up here in New England. I'm from Florida originally, so you know all these blizzards and everything. I've I've only been experiencing them since 2006. Yeah, my, my uncle was down in Florida, and he scraped off enough snow on the truck that he had to make a snowball. When was this? Down in Florida. Oh, this must have been about. 30 years ago? Yeah, okay. 19, that's, 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 that was 1976, right. I think, was when that storm came through because I was alive for it. But that must have been in Jacksonville. So, so Perry, are you new to New I, England? I don't or know if, where he was. Perry, are you new to uh, New England or have you been up here for a long time? Yeah, I was born and raised in Nashua. Okay, and so you're just, prepared. So this I, is, there's nothing new here, here for you. Get yourself some hot cider, man, yep. and yeah. kick your feet up. I'm, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying that you, you are broadcasting on WSMN we are. that everybody in Nashua can hear. So it's we haven't heard a forecast since George got off the year at this 9 morning. o'clock this morning. So what you're, what you're yeah. encountering is a difficulty with radio these days. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of radio is just not local uh, anymore. It's, you know, they, they turn yes. over the, yeah, yeah, but, but the station it, to... If, it, if you don't mind, I'd like to explain to you kind of what, what yes, you're sir. experiencing yes, here. Uh, a lot of radio stations don't have staff... Uh, in the station, I, I'm not. I'm not speaking for WSMN. I don't know if they've got anybody in the station yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand but, you're probably in your garage with two or three guys. I understand this. Well, close. We're close. We're actually in the uh, the living room here. But but I'm. We don't work at WSMN. Room, yeah, having coffee and cocoa. Right. Yeah. So Perry, thank okay, you for the cool call reading. tonight. I'll uh, we'll continue to address the uh, the subject. Uh, it's just kind of hard to have a conversation with Perry. I wanted to get some information out there that people need to understand about this format of radio that we're doing here. Free Talk Live is, while we originate from New Hampshire, not a New Hampshire show, in that the radio stations that take the program are not all in New Hampshire. In fact, the super majority of them are not in New Hampshire. We've got a couple of New Hampshire stations. There's WSMN in Nashua. There's uh, WEZS, I think, over in uh, Laconia as well. So we've got two or three maybe stations in New Hampshire. And the rest of them are all over the place, including as far down as Guam and the Virgin Islands. And obviously, Guam and the Virgin Islands and other places in the south, you know, they're not so concerned about the details of the weather up here in the northeast. And there are weather incidences that are uh, nationwide and even worldwide news. Not really. Well, okay, when the maybe news. tsunami hits, uh, it's news. It's, it's, it's news if something actually happens that's traumatic, right? Like if people are dying, then that usually will well, make a headline. 
Uh, but yeah, I could tell you, Mark, if I were in Florida, I wouldn't give a flip about a blizzard happening in, in New England. I'm I hear sorry, you that you wouldn't give a flip, but, but I would, it has and, been national And news I don't today. pay any attention to the hurricanes that go on now in Florida. Now that I'm in New England, I don't care what hurricanes are menacing the west coast of Florida. Wash them it away. Means no, it means nothing to me. I, even though I have friends and family down there, I mean, you know, what's going to happen is going to happen. Nothing I say on the radio is going to do anything about it. They're either prepared for it or they're not. So... I understand the frustration Perry's experiencing. He doesn't have internet ability, which it's it's important to remember. These people still exist. That there are <laughs> people still who are not. <laughs> these people they, still exist. They do not have an interest in the internet. They don't have, it's not that they don't have access. He lives in Nashville, New Hampshire. He could certainly have internet if he wanted to. Yeah, fiber if he wanted it. Right. But, uh, but you know, some people, they're just not interested in it. They're, they like prefer the old methods of reading and newspapers and things like that. And so people like that, they still turn to radio. And lots of people, even if they have the, the internet, turn to radio. It is a good place to turn to if the weather's going bad in most cases in a lot of locations. Unfortunately, the reality on the ground is in radio, there's been a lot of what's called consolidation in the business. Yep. It started back in the 1990s uh, when the FCC, what uh, they called deregulated the industry. They made it so that companies that owned stations could then own more stations. And look, I'm fine with deregulation, but in this case, this hasn't been an actual, you know, it's not like the FCC rolled themselves back and cut their budget. They just changed a rule to allow for more more stations to be owned by one company. And that's what resulted in the clear channels of the world kind of coming about and ultimately then sort of disseminating their stations after a decade. They bought up a bunch of stations, they cut costs to the bone, and then ultimately they were still struggling in debt, these big companies. And so they've ultimately been selling off a lot of those stations. So we're seeing a shift away from the big radio conglomerates owning stations to where they're actually selling their stations to more locally owned companies. So I think things are moving slowly in the right direction toward more local ownership, because if you have more variety of ownership and you have more local ownership, you are more likely to actually have a radio station that has somebody in the studio who could break in and do a, a local weather report. So we can't do that on Free Talk Live because we're a syndicated radio show. If we were to do weather reports for New England or you know Arizona or whatever, it's just not going to be relevant to the majority of our listening audience. So really, the, the concern should be directed to radio stations. It's the radio station's responsibility to provide local information. This is what they are supposed to be doing. I mean, they're they're tasked with it by the FCC to some extent, but ultimately that's what a station should do. Uh, a station should provide local information that's useful to people because they want to be the the, the go-to place. You want, if you're running a talk radio station or even a music radio station, you want people to think about your station. Oh my God, the weather's getting bad. I need to tune into whatever station to hear the latest on the, the forecast. And if a station's dropping the ball and they're not breaking in, like for instance, you know, if, if this were... Uh, this is something they could do. They could break into Free Talk Live, you know, turn us down and yep. turn the microphones up in the studio and say, we're sorry, but, you know, there's an emergency weather situation and, you know, you need to know this and this and this. And now we return you to your regularly scheduled programming. And they could run something like that every 15 minutes if they wanted to. So they could still keep us on the air, but also provide updates. And if there was like some kind of crazy breaking news, they could totally break in over top of Free Talk Live. So... I wish there was more we could do, but that's just not our role in radio. And it seems like an opportunity for pirate radio stations. You know, if people weren't prevented mm. from opening their own local radio stations, then perhaps there would be more localized news. I think well, so. Okay, so um, a part of this problem that you didn't mention, you talked about consolidation, is revenue. The fact is, mm -hmm. is that radio is a relatively old medium comparative to, y y you know, TV and the internet and yep. things like that, the m the money is moving away from older mediums like newspaper and radio. It's moving towards the internet. The increase in advertising spending was something like 50% um, in digital, that's what they're calling the internet, uh, digital spending last year. And that's an incredible rise. And radio was down, I think, 1.2% or something like that. It's you know, ra radio's on a long, slow roll down. Uh, but that's no excuse to not do local weather coverage, Mark, to say that, oh, you don't the have, money's bad. If you don't have money, you can't hire people. If you don't have people, they can't cover the weather. Well, if you don't have people, you shouldn't be doing uh, you shouldn't be doing radio, and don't market yourself as a local talk radio station or a local anything if you're not providing local value to the people who are listening to your product. 
And to, to use that excuse is just an excuse, Mark. There are stations out there that are doing this, and they're doing it well, and they're doing it right. And they can sell the weather forecast. More coming up. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. In every age, a technology is created that upends the foundations of society. The wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, January 26th, 2015. Silver is trading at $18.08 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,284 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $300. Antiwar.com reports this week 1,000 paratroopers from the 82nd Airborne will be sent to Iraq on what is being called a training mission for the Iraqi army. The troops will join 250 from the same brigade already there. This deployment was announced back in December as part of the 1,500 additional troops President Obama approved for the Islamic State war at the time. Officials have refused to say where these troops will exactly deploy. Some of the U.S. ground troops already in Iraq have faced indirect fire from the Islamic State, and as more troops are added, so too does the chance that they will come into direct contact with forces from the Islamic State on the ground. So far, the only Western troops to engage the Islamic State were Canadian Special Forces, who, like the U.S. forces, were supposed to be strictly in the nation for training purposes. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. Reuters reports oil slid in early Asian trade on Monday with U.S. crude falling close to a six-year low after Greece's election results heightened uncertainty in the eurozone and depressed the bloc's currency against the dollar. Greece's left-wing Syriza appeared on course to trounce the ruling conservatives in Sunday's snap election, setting up a possible confrontation with international creditors. Brent crude fell 37 cents to $48.42 a barrel by 2 a.m., 
Greenwich Mean Time, wiping out light gains made on Friday after the death of Saudi King Abdullah, but off an early low of $47.85. Front month, WTI earlier slid to an intraday low of $44.35, just above $44.20 hit on January 13th, which was the lowest since April 2009. Global financial markets reacted to the Greek election on Monday, with the euro dropping to a near 11-year low against the U.S. dollar. The common currency came under pressure on Friday after the European Central Bank said it would flood markets with over 1 trillion euros, more than expected, to prevent the eurozone from sliding into deflation. Barnabas Gann, an economist at OCBC Bank in Singapore, said, We saw the dollar rally again on Friday, and this is largely on the back of ECB stimulus measures and the euro. Oil, being a dollar-denominated commodity, has been depressed by a stronger dollar. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a North Carolina man is free after nearly four decades in prison after forensic evidence proved he was not responsible for the murder of two women. Joseph Sledge, 70 years old, was convicted on two counts of second-degree murder in the 1976 stabbing deaths of Josephine Davis and her daughter Eileen Davis, who was also sexually assaulted. Sledge was 37 years into a life sentence when a three-judge panel voted unanimously on Friday that he was innocent of the crime. Forensic evidence that had been lost for years was discovered by a court clerk who was cleaning out a high shelf of a vault. A hair sample within, found on one of the bodies and believed to belong to the attacker, was not Sledge's, nor were fingerprints and DNA collected from the scene, according to forensic experts. Last year, a key witness whose testimony led to Sledge's conviction had recanted his evidence, saying he had been promised leniency in a separate case and was coached by police on what to say. Sledge left court after being freed Friday and headed to Georgia to live with his brother. He told reporters he was looking forward to relaxing and sleeping in a real bed and that he would likely get in a pool of water and swim. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Today's fitness trackers can tell how far you're running, but tomorrow's can tell you why you're running. The new Nike Run Logic Plus pinpoints the desperate psychological demons at the root of your exercise routine. Tech Trends reporter Aaron Vaughn has more. It's a problem all runners face. You run and you run and you run, but it's never enough. No matter how many miles you put in, that gnawing ache at your soul never goes away. Now Nike's engineers have found a way for runners to use that existential pain to push themselves even farther. Users keep the device on their wrist at all times. It not only records running times and distances, it also analyzes all of the user's social interactions and emotional patterns. It then creates a unique, detailed profile that dredges the inspiring well of inner turmoil inside every runner. Early users say they notice a big impact on their workout. I started marathoning when I was 28. I thought it was time to get in shape, but then once I realized I was actually running from my meaningless job in ad sales, I started running a lot more, like, all the time. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, you dial toll-free. If you want to contribute to the program, you can bring up anything you'd like to discuss. The toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And the, uh, the key word there is something you'd like to discuss because calling in with a, a weather report just, you know, is not going to really be the most important or interesting of radio. Ian's going to harp uh, on this, man. No, no I'm, not harp harp, I'm not harping on it. I just am sort of recapping here. We did have a call in the last hour uh, from a gentleman who was concerned about the uh, the big storm that's happening in New England. And I, I, I just kind of had to explain that, you know, on nationally syndicated radio, we can't really dig down into the nitty gritty of what's happening in the sky in Keene, New Hampshire, or in his case, uh, in Nashua. That is the responsibility of the local radio station to do. However, there are some interesting things that I think would be interesting to our whole audience 
that sort of surround the, the whole storm situation. And one of those things is the idea of a travel ban. It is, in effect, starting tonight in Massachusetts, a travel ban for the entire state of Massachusetts. I believe one will be going into effect as of 9 o'clock, so it is now in effect, I believe, in Connecticut. And New York State also has a travel ban going into effect, I believe, at 11 o'clock tonight. Those residents have no shame. I mean, I would be so embarrassed if I lived in a place that had a travel ban. Hey, you got to get out of there. <laughs> you can't. It's banned um, in this case. And there are, of course, exceptions to the ban, and they typically include government agents. Um, but we'll talk more about that here in a moment. We've got Garrick on the line first in Illinois. You're on Free Talk Live. Banning travel, banning the freedom of movement. It happens here in the United States, believe it or not. Garrick, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. Sure. Hey, I know uh, Mark went on a cruise ship travel over his holidays. He had been talking about that. And uh, I actually worked on cruise ships for about eight and a half years. Started on a lower level and worked my way up to one of the top positions on the cruise ships. And, what was the position? Uh, uh, I worked my way up to cruise director. Cruise director. And what, what, what position do you start as? Because I would think that this is kind of difficult. There's a lot of positions that really aren't open to Americans. No, you're right. Uh, I was one of very few Americans on every ship I ever worked on. I worked on about eight different ships, and um, there were there were very few Americans on any of the ships. Uh, some of the ones that were based out of now, where are you guys are from? You know, the Florida area, either out of Port Canaveral uh, or well, Port Everglades, uh, and then out of Port of Miami. They had a few more Americans working out of there just because of the different, you know, the clientele on the cruise ships. Um, but that, so I just I start? worked my way on there because I went down to I went down to South Florida there and just went around to all the agencies and jumped on and finally got on a cruise ship. Where'd you start? What'd you start doing? I did sound and lights. I did a stage okay. manager. Stage so manager. I ran okay. the sound and lights you know, okay. for the shows. So what was it that you wanted yeah. to uh, to tell us about? No, I, I was actually, I was more or less curious if Mark was interested in any of the, the inner workings of the cruise ship and what he saw while he was on board, or if you or Derek were interested as well about, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, seeing, seeing things from the inner workings of a cruise ship, because it's a bit different what, working on board. One thing that surprised me about it was is just, uh, you know, the, the cost of a cruise seems to be on par, if not even in some cases, lower than a resort. So a resort is a place on, you know, on land where you go and you, you know, do the sort of things that you do on a cruise. You get food, you get, uh, um, you know, the time on beaches and, mm -hmm. you know, there's activities and all these things. But I would say there's more activities on the boat. And the boat rusts while in the water. It's constantly in a state of deterioration, as everything is that's out in the sea. Um, it has to have uh, fuel that runs it. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it would cost more to run the boat than it costs to run a resort, it would seem to me. Yeah, but you're and, not paying property taxes on the boat in the same way that you would on a big, fancy you're resort. You're paying port fees. Are those worse than property taxes? Port fees are like fifty dollars. Uh, yes, they are. are they? Now that your passengers pay them, but I'm still talking about even with the port fees, it's cheap. It's as cheap as a as a um, resort vacation. Right, but the the costs are cheaper because of you know the, the what they pay the crew members on board is is quite a bit lower than That's what you're going to get on any. Anywhere on land. But you could fly in, um, you could take a plane f flight into Mexico or something like that and stay in some uh, resort in you know, Cayman or Cozumel or wherever it is. Um, right, and those costs are similar to what are on a cruise ship if you just stay in one place. Yeah. It's yeah. similar, but the, the cruise ship costs more to run. I just It's amazing to me well, that's that what they you can... believe, but you may be wrong about that. That it costs more to run, right? I mean, how could it? How could it be cheaper if it costs more to run? I don't. That just doesn't follow. It seems to me that it is costs I would say, less to run, hence the costs of staying there. Here, would be, there are here would be my speculation, if you wish uh, to me spe to speculate. There's a lot more people that take cruises because they want to go different places or whatever the reason is that they want to be on a boat, and therefore you have the uh, the economics of uh, you know having just a bunch of people there. It's the economy of scale. Right, and then also the cost of what the the ships are paying for you know the what they need to bring on board food wise that's it's very inexpensive because everything they're purchasing is duty free themselves mm. as well you know the passengers get to purchase items duty free 
but as well the, the, the ship itself because it's based out of another country. You know, you're flying a flag of a different nation. Every, you know, every ship is flagged of wherever it's, you know, based out of. Panama, they, Liberia. They travel around, they're getting, you know, costs. They're, they're stuff cheap to, you know, cheap to purchase. Well, Garrick, feel free to call in anytime you've got a cruise story that you want to share with us. Mark, did you have another question about running a cruise ship? Yeah, I, I just think it's it's amazing that all those different people there that are um, you know working to make it all happen. It's uh, and they, you know, it just I think it's an interesting experience. Yeah, it's quite an operation, that's yeah. for sure, Derek. Yeah, I got a question. Oh, yeah. I've never been on a cruise. I'm wondering if people get like cabin fever and go crazy. Do Ooh, you deal good with them? Question. Oh yeah, well, actually, crew members do more than than passengers. But yeah, the, especially the you know there are crew crew members that don't don't last a, a month on board and they end up having you to throw go them home. overboard. Uh, no. Well, we'll, what happens we'll when a passenger fine. dies? Because I mean, oh when, well, it, you, it a has lot to these, happen. At a some lot point. of these cruises. No, are... it happens. I yeah, I worked on a cruise ship that was uh, when we well we actually left Miami. And then uh, we went down. It was actually the infamous cruise, the one that went down to the Panama Canal. Because and because of that cruise, uh, you know, the Panama Canal uh, was had in the heart of the, uh, the older population. Everyone wanted to, go, wanted to go down there and see the Panama Canal prior to you know, just because it was part of their 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 history. They go down. We. I, I only did eight weeks of that cruise, and every week uh, we had somebody die on that cruise. Wow. And basically, in, um, well, any, in the port of call, they would have to call the authorities, and they were flown out from, from that port. Really? They flew out the body? Correct, yes. I would I would have guessed they would have just kept it in the freezer and uh, brought it back home. <laughs> No, no, they flew it from the from the port of call. Where That's we going to be expensive. I mean, you have to take it a helicopter to bring Grandma back. I, I mean, how to ship it? Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, that's a lot of money. I mean, I who's <laughs> paying for that helicopter fee? The last thing I would want is to try to get my loving relative out of uh, Cayman, uh, you know, on this this cruise or whatever. Who pays for the helicopter? The cruise ship or the family of the dead relative? Well, no, you're in a you're in a port of call, so they're they're they have to they have to take the body off the ship. You know, and 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 do the proper paperwork there. Hmm. Yeah, I mean they can keep them on board, but as far as I've known, they were never they were never kept on board. They were huh. always taken off. See, that would as a as a customer that would dissatisfy me. The cruises I've been on, I you know, like for instance, we went to uh, Kashadese, Turkey, uh, at one point, and I'm I I know that somebody died on that cruise, mm-hmm. um, and if you know, I I would be very upset if I'm here. You know, gr- Grandma went, uh, you know, left uh, our house in Dallas to you know go take this cruise out of um, uh, Italy, and then ended up in uh, you know Kashadese. Her body's in Kashadese, and Turkey. Then you've got to pay to have it shipped. And I've got to you know I've got to pay for the 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 helicopter flight. I've got to pay for the the international shipping. God knows well, you how you get to. grandma you probably back. Just leave her there. I suppose yeah. you could let them well, deal with hey, it. Hey, what do you want them to do? Like keep her on ice and bring her yeah, back? That's put what I want. The, put her in the cruise morgue. Hey, thanks for the call, Garrick. Appreciate hearing from me tonight. Toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. That was a good question. In there next to the baloney, <laughs> in right, the freezer. We'll, we'll come back with more here in moments. You can bring up anything you want. Travel bans. They're going into effect in the Northeast tonight. Uh, some of them are already in effect. The idea that you can't leave your home. That's happening. Although it's not happening in New Hampshire, and I'm not sure about Vermont and Maine, but it's definitely not Suspense. happening. In New Hampshire, 855 450 free. There's more coming up here in moments. You can share your thoughts with us on Free Talk Live. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. 
Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll free here, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Now, while it may be a bad idea to travel during a tremendous blizzard as the Northeast is going to be facing and is facing here starting tonight, it shouldn't be illegal in a so-called free country. But, of course, we all know that the United States isn't, in point of fact, a free country, and the uh, New England states are proving that tonight by virtue of the fact that they are banning travel. And we're going to continue uh, with that discussion here. What does it mean, and why is New Hampshire not doing it? We're coming up. Free Talk Live. You can, you can get some gold at gold.freetalklive.com. Uh, gold and silver right now are, yeah, they're they're low compared to they, what they've been in the last couple of years. And I think it might be a good time, whether it's for investment like uh, I'm recommending or a, a hedge against inflation or perhaps a barter currency. There's all kinds of different reasons why you might want precious metals. But the place to go is gold.freetalklive.com. We've teamed up with Midas Resources. And they are, you know, nationally known name. They can uh, they deliver you the metal so that you can have it in your hand. You possess it. You keep it safe. And I think that's really the best bet. Also, they've got great prices. And they do what they say they're going to do. That's uh, really awesome uh, folks to work with. I've done lots of uh, business with them over the years. It's gold.freetalklive.com. Let's go to Dave. He's in New Hampshire. Dave, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Derek, Jane, Mark. 
I was actually calling about something else, but I could talk about this travel ban all week long. In fact, I just got off the radio with, uh, well, I guess it was last night, but uh, with uh, WBZ Radio in Boston talking about talking about this. Um, the, the reason why, I mean, there wouldn't be a need for a travel ban if there weren't a need for roads, and there wouldn't be a need for roads without the FAA. The, the flying cars are a 1960s technology, and we live in this dystopian science fiction novel where a basic technology is denied to people. Yeah, I mean, I love the idea of the uh, flying cars. Of course, the Muller Sky Car is one of the more renowned ones, and they've been developing it for a long time. But uh, as you pointed out, the FAA, FAA is firmly standing in the way of any kind of mass adoption of this technology. Right. It costs lives when people can't get around uh, in an emergency, and uh, it makes them uh, ban all kinds of things they otherwise wouldn't need to ban. For but instance, but would it really be safe to, to fly a, uh, a sky car in the middle of a blizzard? No. You wouldn't be able to fly it during a blizzard. You would be able to fly it after the blizzard when the, the, when the uh, sky is clear, but the roads are still impassable. Good point. And it may be, uh, so, so technology is leaping forward, even though we haven't had uh, flying cars to sort of, we would have, technology would be, uh, we'd be even farther along if we did have flying cars. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we're still getting new technology and these sorts of things. I think that uh, GPS autopilots and stuff like this are probably going to make it so that a flying car is going to be safe in many con many wet other conditions that it wouldn't otherwise be safe in. Meaning because it would be autopiloting? Yeah, basically it, the, the computer would be handling it, that kind of thing. You know, snow itself isn't necessarily a problem on a low-flying vehicle. The biggest problem with flying cars is, is they'd be flown by people. Mm. And, you know, in the same the biggest problem with cars today is that they're driven by people. And I think that that, uh, that technology is going to put a lot of people's uh, minds at ease when it comes to flying cars because the rare it's pretty rare for a car to come through your house but a flying car falling from the sky might be more likely to come through a house yeah and i think there would if, if the technology had been allowed to people immediately then there would have there would have had to have been i don't know there would have some rules would have sprung up with regard to where they can fly there'd be roads in the sky basically and that it would look like the planet coruscant you know from from star wars but but it would you know there'd still be at least more people allowed to do it than right now it's just, it's this it's extremely elitist sort of thing you have to be almost an elitist to have a private aircraft and you and it's not that practical to use one yep. uh, to get around traffic jams so uh, anyway well Dave but, thanks for that uh, anything else you want to share yeah I was actually calling about the situation in Bedford. Uh, you guys remember what happened uh, a year or two ago where the uh, uh, Ben Swan was reporting on the, the Republican uh, in insiders freaking out about uh, the free staters who were running? Yeah, so, yeah. There's, uh, so for our listeners who aren't familiar with this, uh, we moved here, all of us, including you, Dave, on the phone. You're Dave from Dave Ridley Report, RidleyReport.com. Um, anyway, we've moved here as part of the Free State Project, and... Uh, there are a number of folks who are getting involved in the political system. They're running for political office. And turns out that when you threaten the status quo, the people who support the status quo, whether they be Republicans or Democrats, start to freak out and will do everything they can within their power to stop you. And so the two guys— Except work together. <laughs> the two guys well, you're talking— Actually, yeah, we've seen that. together on this. We've, we've seen them do that uh, this, this time around, too. The two guys uh, that you're talking about ran for local offices, like, on the town level. One of them was, uh, I think, selectman. The other one was a uh, school board member. And there were mailers that went out, very expensive, full-color, two-sided, fancy, glossy mailers that went out attacking these guys and labeling them as free staters. There were media uh, reports. There was like a local cable access show hosted by a local do-gooder who got on there and attacked them. And so you've got an update on that situation because that was a year or so ago. Yeah, it's somewhat of a vague update, but there's just a ton of traffic in my email box over the last couple of days of uh, all kinds of Bedford uh, freedom lovers who've been uh, talking about, uh, I guess there's another election coming up pretty soon, or two two openings that'll be on the school board in Bedford. They're going to have another go at it, it looks like. I have not looked at the emails too, too closely because I'm afraid I'm going to see something people don't want me to know mm. and report. Uh but uh, there's obviously there, it's going to be this this situation is going to riot again. There's going to be the the revenge of the uh, 
of the uh, Liberty folk in Bedford. But I can't tell at this point whether it's free staters that are going to be running for this position. Well, like I think it's great. Already- I, I, I think it's wonderful when people freak out about free staters running for office because it shows how much of an impact we're having here. Uh, because if, if the Liberty activists in New Hampshire were not worth paying attention to, then they wouldn't be sending out mailers. If we weren't actually a threat to the status quo, then they wouldn't be spending thousands of dollars. I mean, I don't know if you've ever done a direct mail advertising campaign before, but not only do you have to pay for the postage, but you got to pay for the printing, and that's not cheap. I mean, yep. you, add, you add all that up, it's thousands of dollars to send to one house, to every single household in a town even as small as Bedford. We were just talking off air, uh, Derek and I, about uh, the weather in New Hampshire. We're getting snowmageddons coming up here, but winters can be kind of tough and, and in New Hampshire. I think the weather in New Hampshire is the best thing about it because it really weeds out, uh, you know, the what we call the uh, sunshine activists, the we- the fair weather activists, mm, yeah. the folks that I can't move up to New Hampshire. It's cold there. Well, good because that weather drives away, uh, you know. The statists, right? Most of the um, politicians here in New Hampshire are activist geriatrics. Mm-hmm. And when their little party isn't going the way they want it to go, because the free staters are raining on their parade, they have to weigh that against. Uh, maybe Moving I could just Florida. move down to Florida and yeah. play golf. <laughs> and they do. It's really awesome. Yeah, it's true. Hey, Dave, thanks for the call tonight. And, of course, our listeners that want to keep up to date on what's happening in New Hampshire from the activist scene, a great place to go is RidleyReport.com. We'll look forward to seeing you around, as I'm sure we will. That's Dave Ridley from RidleyReport.com. He's been doing great work for much, even longer than we have. He's been here longer than you and I, Mark. And has ever since he's gotten here, basically been reporting with his own video reporting. He's the second most popular YouTube channel in New Hampshire on the from a news perspective. We'll come back with more here. Free Talk Live continues in moments. We got time for you. You can dial in toll free 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We'll talk about travel bans coming up. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-467-5090. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-467-5090. That's 1-800-467-5090. Call 1-800-467-5090. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in Creative Commons. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write WORMS in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Welcome to the program. You may dial toll-free here at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. With you tonight, you've got me, Ian. Derek J. And Mark. And don't forget to check out Derek J's website, derekj.me. You've got a big announcement that you actually made last night on the 600th episode of Freedom Fiends. Uh, on which I had the the good fortune to sit in for a few segments uh, with you and Michael W. Dean and M.K. Lords, and you you made a, a shocking, surprising announcement, but uh, it's also a, a good news. It's, there's some some shocking news and some good news mixed in uh, together. I think overall it's it's good news for you. But uh, what's going on? Should I do that now? I think you should do it now because I don't want to lose track and forget about it. So all right, so I did a show called Peace News. For over two years, and it started out as like a five-minute update daily on what was going on in the world of peaceful resistance. Which you did that update like 200 plus days, 270 or something. Yeah, like yeah, uh, that was a lot. Seven um, days a week. Oh, was it? Seven yes, days? it, was, it was, was seven days a week for over 200 episodes, and uh, they included video as well. They were not just audio That's reports. Right. There were five-minute audio video reports, which are still on YouTube. You can go watch and see what was going on mm-hmm. in the the past. But, um, you know, I created it because I didn't think there were enough outlets focusing on peaceful resistance, which is my obsession. You know, these people who have the courage to say no to arbitrary authority and take the consequences. That takes a lot of courage. And I wanted to encourage that courage by uh, reporting on it. And uh, I I think mission accomplished because... Well, you expanded it into a uh, more of a long form show. Right, Peace right. News Now was a newscast. It became a a two hour long, twice weekly, uh, long yeah. form program. Yep, uh, which also included video and uh, interactive chat and uh, callers. So it, you know, it was great to be able to focus on and do in depth interviews with people who were peacefully resisting around the country. I got to talk to farmers who would disobey the the USDA and. Uh, farmers who were uh, selling raw milk without government approval and sometimes facing jail penalties for that. And uh, that was really cool to be able to focus on that and give them some attention. But, you know, these uh, days, my interests have expanded and there are tons of other news outlets covering these types of stories, which is great. I celebrate that. Mm. The LibertyBeat.com does an awesome job. Uh, we were, they were just reporting on Ross Ulbricht. And, yes. And uh, Daryl W. Perry does an amazing job at FPP.cc covering right, he's news. He's doing uh, Peace, Love, Liberty Radio thrice weekly. Oh, yeah. just amazing. I mean, he single-handedly covers uh, so much news. Uh, it could almost replace you know, everything. But uh, now I am moving on because there's a show... Actually, where I got my start, uh, called Flaming Freedom, 
and yeah. it has disappeared. One whoa, of my whoa, favorites. whoa, whoa. Hold on just one second before we go any further. I believe you got your start on Free Talk Live while oh, Ian was no. in jail for uh, uh, I it was civil point, disobedience. Point of fact, Mark, you actually heard me first on Flaming Freedom. Is that so? Yes. yes. Uh, that's how Damn you it. knew that I was so good. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, right. <laughs> so actually, Dale got to me first, uh, I'm sorry to say. but Good for him. I'm glad to return to Flaming Freedom because it is since uh, that the flame has been you. put out yeah. and I need to, to uh, blow on those embers and rekindle right. that flame. So here it is, uh, bringing back Flaming Freedom. Gayer than ever. <laughs> it will be gayer than ever. <laughs> and uh, we're it's not... It's called Flaming if Freedom. That's possible. <laughs> Could it possibly it be more gay? gay? We're not afraid to dive into sex talk. No, and, no. you know, there aren't a show, there aren't any shows where it's just gay anarchists talking about no. stuff that interests them uh you know, I've, i'm inspired by free talk live and freedom well, there aren't Fiends that many gay and, shows period right but yeah. you know certainly there aren't any gay freedom shows yeah so you know this is a niche and it's not being filled right now and i'm happy to take up that torch i can't wait to see what it's going to be like uh, we've got great co-hosts dale of course will be returning He's coming back okay, lauren good. will be returning and uh, we'll have some other surprises as well and oh, that's so exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun. So you can, of course, continue listening at LRN.FM. Yes, you're going to stay with... Uh, so Peace News Now, your final episode is tomorrow night. So that's it's not true. Yet over, it's not yet completely over. You're going to do the last two hours, Tuesday night, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Time on LRN.FM. That's cool. The first Flaming Freedom episode is going to wait until probably the following the next week. week. Yes. Yeah. So, so there'll be a Thursday. Is it? Is it, if you decide it's going to be yes. Thursday or Sunday? Thursday, Thursday ten Sunday. to midnight. So not Eastern. starting this week. Starting next week, Flaming Freedom returns to the airwaves, which I think is just fantastic. That's so right. That's great. And you know, not everything has to go on forever. That's so. I think you know. When it's time to go, it's time to move on. It's time to move on. Yeah, I'm happy. You know, I'm doing lots of other shows. I do Cop Block Radio, where we focus on police accountability, and I do two Bitcoin shows a week. So, oh, yeah. hosting Freedom Fiends as well on Sunday nights. So it's it's uh, I'm, I'm loaded. Yeah, well, <laughs> so. you're actually going to get three hours back out of this because you're doing or two hours back because you're doing two Peace News Nows. You'll be stopping that. Be doing one Flaming Freedom. So you'll actually have yep. your Tuesday nights available to do something else. which yeah. I'm sure you'll fill it with something. You'll probably go back to video editing or something like that. I will, you know. But it's not like uh, disappearing one two-hour show means I get two hours. It means I actually get like six hours back. You know, there's there's, there's like show prep. Yeah, and, there's yeah. tons of stuff doing and preparation for that one live show so yeah lots of more free time hopefully it'll be fun so excited for you Derek J and, and thank you for sharing that tonight of course people uh, who are listening may follow you at your blog which links to all of the shows that you mentioned uh, right. Derek J dot M-E let's go to James in Arizona you're on <laughs> Free Talk Live I'm sure he's called to wish you uh, the best go ahead James well speaking of bands and fairy tales as Derek Gay, you have once called biblical stories, yes. uh, but I won't call you religious bigot for saying such garbage. Uh, that, uh, And speaking of peace news now, I mean, I got to because this week cowardly claim I was dragging Islam through the mud. Yeah. Really? Yeah, really. Well, how soon your pothead forgets that on one episode of peace news now, I, uh, pardon interruption, insisted that you not call ISIS terrorist Muslims but just call them murderers. Do you yeah. remember that time, Derek? Yeah, Gay? that's an accurate correction. I I stand right. by that. You're right. So you're going to apologize to me for because you oh, have no I'm basis. Oh, I'm so to, sorry, yeah, James. I'm sure <laughs> you're I've sorry. offended your delicate sensibilities. Hey, hey, there you go. He got his apology. Eight fifty five four fifty free. James really, will, <laughs> really likes apologies. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. The uh, travel ban is in effect in a lot of New England, uh, apparently, according to NBC News. Uh, New York ordering all cars off the roads in 13 counties starting at 11 o'clock. Massachusetts, midnight. Uh, the entirety of Massachusetts, there will be a travel ban. Uh, Connecticut, uh, Connecticut, I believe, started theirs at 9 p.m. tonight. You cannot get on the roads unless you are part of their exemption list. And according to the, uh, let's see, WCVB out of Boston, they go through a long list of exemptions, including public safety vehicles, public works vehicles, and you know, all kinds of government vehicles. And then they go on to there, the very bottom of the list, exempt travel necessary to maintain critical private sector facilities. 
Uh, they use examples like energy, fuel, financial systems. So apparently, if you are uh, running a bank, you get to go to work. What and about radio bro- uh, broadcasters? No, they don't mention that. I think that that uh, qualifies. I would say that qualifies, too. But I wonder if there's – is there a list of critical private industries according to the government, or is it just arbitrary and they'll decide you know, when you On tell the spot? them? Uh, of course, which you know you don't have to tell them anything, right? If the cops are pulling you over during one of these travel bans, you're not under any obligation just because there's a state of emergency to tell them where you're going. But uh, I wonder how they would handle a situation like that. If if there were cop blockers out on the roads tonight in uh, in Massachusetts after uh, midnight when this travel ban goes into effect, they get pulled over, and you know some cop is trying to interrogate them about who they are and where they're going. Uh, what would happen if you didn't answer those questions? Won't the cops just take everyone's word that they're going to stay home? Because I can't imagine they would spend police time and energy being out on the roads during a travel ban. Like, uh, what, why, well, the what are they out are there to be patrol? On the roads. Why? Well, they've got nothing to patrol. Because they want to arrest you for uh, okay. breaking the travel ban. Hold on. Okay, so um, when uh, the the Halloween blizzard hit here in Keene a couple of years ago, and yeah. I ended up in uh, uh, along the side the of the road, bag. a police officer was the first one on the scene, thank yeah. goodness for him, because AAA left me in the lurch. Oh, wow. Uh, but, um, you know, what they did is he did ask me things like, what are you doing out here? You know, like mm-hmm. it, at that point, they're only going to ask you when you're in the ditch. You think so? You don't think they'll pull people over who are on the roads? I don't think during so. During a travel ban? I mean, that sounds pretty serious. I could be wrong. Maybe you live Let's in see. one of these states and you want to explain to us what will happen. You're welcome to do that. There's more coming up on Free Talk Live. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. While the U.S. Constitution's first sentence states that liberty is a blessing, our founders didn't feel the same about government. Instead, they wrote the Constitution to limit government and protect our liberties. During the early 20th century, many in power, including politicians and judges, embraced a new theory that the Constitution primarily exists to empower government. Fortunately, over the past 50 years, courts and politicians have expanded protections for some of our rights, including free speech and personal privacy. But many other liberties, our economic freedom to earn a living, our right to private property and more, remain greatly unprotected. Government officials retain vast power to regulate and confiscate our property and dictate economic choices. So the Constitution must remain at the foundation of our future. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Following earlier reports of 27-year-old Mark Felder's profound and startling level of pride in his alma mater, the University of Miami alumnus spoke to Onion reporters about his strong affection for the academic institution that left him totally unprepared for the job market and floundering in $50,000 of debt. I would not trade my time at the University of Miami for anything. Miami has the best college experience in the country, hands down. I had an awesome time there, and it's an amazing place. We've got awesome bars, awesome sports, an awesome campus, and we're pretty much right next to the beach. I mean, what more could you want? You have to be crazy not to go there. Felder, who paid over $140,000 in tuition, told reporters he takes an annual trip to see a Hurricanes football game and visit the university that failed to teach him any marketable job skills whatsoever, leaving him so financially helpless he was forced to move back in with his parents after graduating. AMI, AMI, fight, fight, fight! Yeah, it's all about the U, baby! All about the U! That's what I'm talking about! Go Canes, baby! For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Even in the remaining moments, we do have enough time for you. And, of course, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Do you like Free Talk Live? You like what we're doing here on the radio, talking about freedom, liberty, seven nights a week, and uh, having a good time doing it? Well, we can do that on more radio stations. We've got over 150 stations now from coast to coast and beyond in the United States. We've got satellite uh, listeners in places as far away as Cameroon, Africa, and elsewhere. I've uh, got a guy in Ghana who sent me a message recently as well. So, uh, got a lot of people listening to Free Talk Live, but we could have more with your help. You can become a Free Talk Live amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. That's AMP, as in Advertise, Market, and Promote. That's what it stands for. amp.freetalklive.com. It's five bucks a month. You can use any major credit card through PayPal. You can also use Visa or MasterCard. And that money goes to help Free Talk Live expand our reach to reach new people with these ideas. And you get perks. You get access to the AMP Only call-in lines, the AMP Only podcast, the AMP Only forum, as well as the AMP Only Facebook group. Go and get the details and get signed up. Please, it makes a big difference for us when you do that. That's amp.freetalklive.com. We were talking about these travel bans. There are uh, exemptions, of course, because, well, you know, government agents have to be on the roads in Massachusetts, uh, Connecticut, and New York. I'm looking at the list of exemptions here. You can be exempt from the travel ban if you are a patient traveling for the purpose of receiving urgent critical care or you are traveling and necessary to maintain private sector critical private sector facilities, and also if you are supporting business operations that provide what they define as critical services to the public, including gas stations, pharmacies, food stores, and hardware stores. Uh, But otherwise, they are saying, no, you are not allowed to be on the roads, and presumably you will be arrested uh, if you do so. How do you prove you're not a patient going to the hospital? My arm hurts. uh, I'm having heart palpitations. Let me go. They might escort you to the hospital. All right, fine. Um, but I mean, okay. So if they if people are going to work at the gas station and mm-hmm. the hardware store, they're not going to be pulling people over. Ian, this is a situation where, uh, like if you if you're going out for kicks or whatever the reason is, is and you end up in the ditch and important, you know, safety uh, resources are sent out to get your butt out of there, mm-hmm. then you deserve a paddling. Okay, like full on. That's what you deserve. And I don't care if the state gives it to you or who gives it to you. So at that point, they find out, find you in the ditch. They ask you where you're going. You're like, I was going to work at the gas station. Which one? I don't know. I'm lying to you. You think they should arrest that person? They deserve a paddling of some sort. They What they deserve is they deserve a about? bill for the uh, services they that have been rendered to They already paid their bills. Them. They've been paying taxes this whole time. Look, the fact is, is that those... Uh, those services that you're getting, as a fireman, they're going to be calling me all day tomorrow. Mm-hmm. My life is on the line getting out there, putting my four-wheel drive truck on the road to be able to go out and get some moron who has decided to end up in a ditch. Screw that guy. Nobody decides He's an idiot. To, nobody decides to end up in a ditch, and just because someone ends up in a ditch doesn't mean they're an idiot. It could mean that they— If they didn't belong on the road tomorrow— 
Yes, they are. Says you. How do you, how how do you, do you own the roads? What's that? I don't own the roads. I just have to go get more of that attention. Well, then how do you get to determine who does and doesn't deserve to be on the roads? They are telling you right here. Oh, they. The oh, okay. The people who okay. own the roads. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed by uh, how you're behaving here, what Mark. What are you it talking about? Like you have a, you've kind Ladies of and gentlemen, kind of tomorrow's a blizzard. It, it is the blizzard of the year, the blizzard of the decade. Oh, they so what if I got say snow that crap. tires? What if I got a, a big monster truck? I right. do. They always say that crap. Every year, it's the blizzard of the this, this century. Not every year. But and then it, it seems like it. It seems like it. There's always some big blizzard, and it's so scary. And then, you know, okay, some people die. But that's not the snow's fault. It's because the power lines are run above ground in New Hampshire. And so when they get disconnected, uh, basically people just have to wait and freeze if they don't have anywhere to go uh, in that time frame. Look, I mean, I'm not saying people should get out and get on the roads, but I don't think it should be illegal to do so, Mark. And just because you're butt hurt that you volunteered to help people, maybe you're not the right guy for that job. Maybe you should <laughs> uh, maybe you should not be volunteering if you're going to be all grumpy when you go out and try to save somebody's life. Well, look, uh, well, you're acting like that. this is resource. Uh, the resources are going to be directed in certain ways, right? Like there's people tomorrow who are going to need help legitimately. Mm -hmm. People are going to have heart attacks, and somebody has to go out and get them and get them to the hospital. Now, if you're, you know, if my department's on call for the uh, the person in the ditch that should have been home, and then the heart attack occurs, and the uh, mm -hmm. the response is ten minutes late, as a result, whose responsibility? And that person dies because they somebody to get a, whose responsibility is that? I, I say it's the person in the ditch. I kind of see where Mark is coming from, like uh, from a resources standpoint. You know, you're a volunteer, but the solution isn't a paddling, obviously. And I don't, th I think you're joking about that, but. Well, I don't know what you're supposed to, to do to them. I know. You take their picture, and you say, this guy's a jerk. Look, they went Fine. out during a snowstorm, posted everywhere, posted around their place of employment, let people know what they did, and that they're a drain on the, the community. I, you know, that's the worst you could do, and that doesn't harm anyone. Right. I'm don't fine with that, but you can believe violence. that the government would go after me for doing something like that. I don't know. Well, I don't know why. The guy's in public. You can take his damn picture if you want to. And then I you know, but I don't think the fire department's going to be really happy with me taking the picture of people who we're supposedly saving. Well, then they can tell you they and don't want your services them. anymore. Um, so anyway. Ian back certainly to the, has solutions for somebody who doesn't go out and save anybody in ditches. It's not my job. I'm not, you know, I'm not stepping up for it's that. It's not my job either. I don't get paid for it. That's well, what a job is. Well, bitching about it. I mean, That's you, all I'm saying is stop killing people by going out in the road when you don't belong there, Ian. Uh, I haven't killed anybody and gone out on the road. No, I'm talking, talking to about. I'm talking to anybody who goes out on the road for no good reason tomorrow. It can be a good reason if you're just you know go, wanting to go to your friend's house. That's a good reason as nope, long as you're driving not. carefully. Um, so anyway, <laughs> in New Hampshire, you uh, will not get arrested for this. Now it would be a good reason to go to your uh, friend's house if. You didn't have a generator at your house or something. Maybe you like just that. want to go for a winter storm party. Yeah, that's no, that's not a good reason. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why not? Why shouldn't I be able to go where I want to? You, you can go where you want, but All you're right, responsible then. for your actions. Of course, at that point. I'm responsible I for wish, my actions. See, here's what I want: is I want my pager when it comes up to say this guy was going to a winter party to yeah. drink alcohol, <laughs> and then I know, wh you know, where to put him on the list. When I show up, I say, "Hey, a hole, you're last on the list. <laughs> Sit here and freeze. I'll be back in a little while." Because if you went out to a winter storm mm. party, you probably didn't pack the things you need to have in your car mm. for an emergency, right? You I've know, always, got you stuff. always got that stuff in my car. You should, yeah. because you're not going to go out to a winter party. And you live in Keene, New Hampshire, you're going to crawl along at 20 miles an hour on, yeah. on residential right. streets. I can walk wherever I need to go in Keene, so I really don't have to drive anywhere. But um, I just don't understand you know, why people would have to be told they're going to be arrested if they are on the road. There's been no, there's no mention really of arrest a, here. If it's a ban on travel, you will be arrested if you're not on the roads for a legitimate reason. They don't ban people from traveling in New Hampshire. In New Hampshire, the official word from the state is the following. Here's uh, an article from the Keene Sentinel. Governor Maggie Hassan is declaring a state of emergency, which is the same thing the other governors do in the yep. other states. They declare a state of emergency, and then they ban people from being on the roads. And she's 
asking New Hampshire residents to stay home and avoid driving in more than a foot of snow tonight and Tuesday. She said at a news conference uh, this afternoon, Hassan urged Granite Staters to buy enough food, batteries, flashlights, and emergency supplies to last through Wednesday when the snow is expected to stop. She says people should be prepared at home for one to two days. State government offices will be closed Tuesday, and Hassan asked companies and local governments to follow suit. So there's a lot of words in here like asking yeah, sure. and suggesting. Uh, and I guess it was a different article. I had seen another article where they cited some of the state police. Oh, here it is. People should, should avoid driving anywhere, according to state police director Robert Quinn. And, quote, we highly encourage you to stay at home. Now, this language is completely different from the language that is being used by the government bureaucrats in Massachusetts, Connecticut. And New Jersey. New, I don't know about New Jersey. But New, New Jersey's York, on that list, too. Um, where these state government people are saying... You know, this is a ban. You are prohibited from traveling. Whereas in New Hampshire, it's you probably should stay home. We would strongly urge you to not go out, but you're not going to get arrested. We're not threatening you because New Hampshire is a little bit different than some of the surrounding states out there. I mean, I certainly I agree with that completely. But this ban that you're talking about here says that people who work at gas stations and hardware stores and a variety mm -hmm. of other places can go to work. And I just contend that the police officers don't have time to stop everybody and say, you're going to work at a hardware store? Are you going to work at a gas station? They're not well, doing that. Well, you're contending that. that, but you really have no evidence for it, uh, do you? You don't right. have any other ev evidence to the contrary. I don't, but I do have the fact that they're banning people from traveling. Understood. Uh, what they're probably going to do is pass out tickets to people who end up in a ditch, who d didn't belong on the road. Well, that's speculation on your part, and I guess I uh, think it's much we'll probably more, never find out what the truth reasonable. is on that because most people won't get out and travel just because that's the sensible thing to do. But at Indeed. least in New Hampshire, the government bureaucrats, at the very least, are encouraging people to do the right thing rather than threatening them, Mark. We'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, January 26th, 2015. Silver is trading at $18.08 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,284 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $300. 
Antiwar.com reports this week 1,000 paratroopers from the 82nd Airborne will be sent to Iraq on what is being called a training mission for the Iraqi army. The troops will join 250 from the same brigade already there. This deployment was announced back in December as part of the 1,500 additional troops President Obama approved for the Islamic State war at the time. Officials have refused to say where these troops will exactly deploy. Some of the U.S. ground troops already in Iraq have faced indirect fire from the Islamic State, and as more troops are added, so too does the chance that they will come into direct contact with forces from the Islamic State on the ground. So far, the only Western troops to engage the Islamic State were Canadian Special Forces, who, like the U.S. forces, were supposed to be strictly in the nation for training purposes. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Reuters reports oil slid in early Asian trade on Monday with U.S. crude falling close to a six-year low after Greece's election results heightened uncertainty in the eurozone and depressed the bloc's currency against the dollar. Greece's left-wing Syriza appeared on course to trounce the ruling conservatives in Sunday's snap election, setting up a possible confrontation with international creditors. Brent crude fell 37 cents to $48.42 a barrel by 2 a.m., Greenwich meantime, wiping out light gains made on Friday after the death of Saudi King Abdullah, but off an early low of $47.85. Front month WTI earlier slid to an intraday low of $44.35, just above $44.20 hit on January 13th, which was the lowest since April 2009. Global financial markets reacted to the Greek election on Monday, with the euro dropping to a near 11-year low against the U.S. dollar. The common currency came under pressure on Friday after the European Central Bank said it would flood markets with over 1 trillion euros, more than expected, to prevent the eurozone from sliding into deflation. Barnabas Gann, an economist at OCBC Bank in Singapore, said, We saw the dollar rally again on Friday, and this is largely on the back of ECB stimulus measures and the euro. Oil, being a dollar-denominated commodity, has been depressed by a stronger dollar. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a North Carolina man is free after nearly four decades in prison after forensic evidence proved he was not responsible for the murder of two women. Joseph Sledge, 70 years old, was convicted on two counts of second-degree murder in the 1976 stabbing deaths of Josephine Davis and her daughter Eileen Davis, who was also sexually assaulted. Sledge was 37 years into a life sentence when a three-judge panel voted unanimously on Friday that he was innocent of the crime. Forensic evidence that had been lost for years was discovered by a court clerk who was cleaning out a high shelf of a vault. A hair sample within, found on one of the bodies and believed to belong to the attacker, was not Sledge's, nor were fingerprints and DNA collected from the scene, according to forensic experts. Last year, a key witness whose testimony led to Sledge's conviction had recanted his evidence, saying he had been promised leniency in a separate case and was coached by police on what to say. Sledge left court after being freed Friday and headed to Georgia to live with his brother. He told reporters he was looking forward to relaxing and sleeping in a real bed and that he would likely get in a pool of water and swim. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. For years, Southwest Airlines has boasted having the most loyal customers in the industry. Now the low-cost carrier is calling on its most frequent customers to finally do something in return for the airline. The company rolled out their new Loyalty Goes Both Ways program in a new ad campaign. You said you wanted free check bags and we listened. Now you listen to us. Southwest